Okay, so welcome to our returning D D game. It sure. has been eight weeks since we last played. Almost feels like an AA meeting. Uh, I'm saying it like that. The characters have had a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely suffering <laughs> draws. <laughs> so, uh, this is session number 122 for this group. Uh, and for the uh, games in general this group has played, they have done 349 sessions uh, over various campaigns. So they, they have played for quite a while, and this is episode 8, season 2, phase 3. So there are, uh, there are five seasons in a phase, uh, and each season goes for a year in game time. Whether it actually goes over a year of play remains to be seen. Sometimes it's longer, so. sometimes it's shorter. Uh, some phases have been skipped completely by groups, like Friday missed phase four of the previous um, phase, uh, no, season four of the previous phase. But they are currently in a world war situation. Oop, that's and are dealing with uh, trying to find support for the nation of Darakin after many great losses. They are facing a That's enemy they only know as the master, and they realize that um, this guy uh, is equivalent of a level 35 character in the same scale that you guys are. So, uh, they're 12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suspect it's not one third. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect it's, it might well, not be well, logarithmic, but it's probably well, pretty close. It, it, <laughs> not on a pure power level. It, it, every level can be um, shockingly more mm. powerful than the next. Mm. Uh, every two levels is definitely a power jump, mm. especially when magic is involved. And uh, eventually, every character will have magic at their fingers, whether or not they um, throw it every time. But they yep. can all cast um, ritual spells because the world is high magic, not low magic. Yep. Most D&D settings, in including Forgotten Realms, is a low magic world. So, Mistaro was magic. always. Doesn't, what was that? I said, speaking of magic, spells. <laughs> yeah, mo most of the other settings out there design um, magic to be far and few between. There are um, entire cultures here uh, around magic. Yeah, Forgotten Realms is described as low magic, but it's not. Uh, there are some parts of it that have absolutely no, no um, spell casting in it at all, and it's, it's far, far and few between. between. There, there are, are cultures here, almost, almost none of those. those. Uh, I read some country will seldom see magic. I read some in uh, second edition that didn't have spells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rare, rare and Squiffy very, very far, like far apart. Sorry? Would you Everybody like called magic to some extent. It's, it's not as high magic as Mistara, but it's higher magic than a lot of others. But they had uh, also referenced as um, wizards were rare. Whereas in no, no, Mistara. Described as, not referenced as. Have you seen the number of actual wizards around? They're everywhere. Yes, there was met almost not as many of them as Mistara. Yes, but, but per per population, they were supposed to be a lot lower. That's per description, not per yeah. actual published material. Yes, that's published a, material that's, that's avoid what I was and saying breaks. Earlier. Yeah. That's yeah. what I just said. Yeah. Described as low magic, actually presented as high magic, including gear everywhere, including agents of Mistara going round to dungeons and planting magic items for people mm. as their job. You can't call that low magic. Not with a goddess of magic plants stuff for you to find. But so. uh, unlike Dragonlance, they didn't have the level cap. Mm. No. So yeah. Dragonlance was uh, also considered um, low magic for a lot of it. Yeah. That, um, was. that they they had described all of the settings that way mm. because um, they'd also expected the power levels to be low. Yeah. So they didn't want people to go above. Um, they reckon people would retire around 10th level, was the basic you, idea. I mean, I'm, I'm running Storm yeah. Kings at the moment, it's about the finishing up, you know, which we're, we're putting on hold. Mm. And I think the party's got kind of one magic item each, basically, yeah. on average. Mm. If you remember the write up in second edition on getting higher levels, you get name level at 11. You plan for your god to um, invite you to be a, become a demigod between 13th and 17th 
The second edition did not expected you to never hit level twenty. Yeah, I've never. As I said, I've, uh, in in all that, the time I've played, I've never yeah. ever got the character above tech level. Yeah, <laughs> but that, that's explicit and central in the DMG. It's not an option. Yeah, mm. it's an option on when it happens. But at some point, your god will take you up as a demigod. Which always made it feel um, jarring that mm. the um, books had uh, characters up to 20th level. Mm. Yeah. But uh, no one was ever expected to get it. It was mm. more your adversaries were supposed to use it, not the players. Yeah. And so it was designed so players would imagine they'd get that. Mm. And then get taken us up as a demigod and make an NPC. But having run many many games to pass twentieth level, mm. for me it's not really an issue. I'm yeah. used to playing at high levels mm. and managing things. Mm. So that's but where it takes practice. So that's where the fourth edition minion rules come in. Mm. I do use them mm. a lot. Thank you very much. So you will expect to have um, various times where you're just completely overpowered compared to the people you're fighting. Yeah. But if you don't control them and put them down, then they will become a threat. Yes. Mm. yes. And putting things Pe down isn't always killing them. Yeah. No. Pe but people with air removing effect, the threat. People mm. with area of effect spells of whatever kind are ridiculously useful. Mm. So I'll have people introduce themselves before yes. we get to where you are in the story. Yeah. We'll start off online with Jeremy. Good evening all. I'm playing Black Emma. The uh, Akuragun tribesman who uh, started out as a lovely, humble, unknown, uh, but uh, experienced lawman, like a, a sheriff of the tribes, uh, got sent on a, a mission to look after a couple of younglings as they were sent off out into the unknown. And uh, unfortunately, the younglings were not, did, did not survive. And, Gakdimut, well, at that time it was Gakdimut, but it's in Uh There were some uh, issues with uh, time, really wobbly businesses and bits and pieces, and he came back too old to the tribe and got sent out to the tribe, but uh, was then uh, subsequently selected by Kurgan himself to return as the uh, shaman of the tribes. And uh, become clan chief of chiefs, and has since developed, including becoming chief of the dragon tribe, which uh, consisted of all the dragonborn, and uh, uh, between the Turrican and Pearl, was it? Or Great One? Uh, the uh, they started to help him adapt to. Becoming a, a clock over between the humans of the Eurigans and the dragon kind of the dragon tribe by turning him into a half dragon. Or, well, technically, because it's coming from the Eurigans, more unlike a topic dragon, i.e., the between forms. He is technically a were dragon from the game perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, the magic of his people is they can turn into their totems. Yeah. And they so, have around three totems. Yeah, so in his case, yeah, he turns into a dragon as his totem thing. Mm. So he can, yeah, that's right, he can turn human for a while. He, he can turn human as long as he wants, yeah. he can turn dragon as long mm. as he wants. It's not a he magic just, effect. Up, I've, I've just not seen him as not half dragon. He dragon form for a month while he actually adapted and... Oh yeah, no, fair uh, enough. He had I, to I, I, it, so. I didn't know that it stopped. He had spent um, yeah. downtime learning to um, oh, okay. change, yeah. and it took him about two months downtime to actually uh, wow. figure that out, uh, because he was adventuring at the time. Mm. Uh, so then that brings us to our next online person being Kesley. Mm. Hello, hello. I am playing Kupa Alani Aokai. She goes by Lani, the holder of many titles. She is a... Makai human uh, weapons master. So think, think Islander. Think mm. Moana, think with mm. Maui, and just really good at weapons. Um, so she holds many titles, such as Lonnie the Undying, Lonnie uh, the Provisioner of Pixies, uh, the newest one that we got to last game, Lonnie Fettuccini. Um, I'm not going to her, her. There was actually food involved with that one. <laughs> it wasn't even so, 
There is a, a thing where her goal was to try to gain as many titles as possible. And in this joke, Molly the Undying became uh, almost actually true um, because she is now destined to become a master of time, potentially live for, what was it, 10,000 10, years? And uh, also uh, be working for the god of death and or just respect death. Who knows? That's what for, we're, we're going to find out. And yes, so uh, that character is uh, well regarded by a lot in Durrican because a uh, renowned fighter from an area of renowned fighters. Mm. Um, and, and not the berserker type of fighters. Like no. So uh, we also we also have with Jeremy's character. Uh, he was a general of the armies fighting the master. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, his troops took the biggest losses. Yeah. Well, they up against the fucking foes fighting the battles. Yeah, the they found out that their opponents spent an entire year of the war just learning their defenses. Uh, and didn't care how many losses he had in that time. Mm -hmm. And then when he attacked them in the second year, he actually sent skilled troops against them, and yeah. they didn't have a chance. Mm. So, uh, uh, you know the Everon setting at all? Uh, vaguely. You know, how it's you know how it's referred to after the war? Yeah. This is roughly the war they were referring to the if they were in this <laughs> setting, because the Master has shown up with Warforged. Right. Up until then, Warforged were uh, basically domestic uh, automations built by the gnomes mm. to assist them and run off the life energy of someone who disappointed the um, community. That's so. something I've yet to discover about gnome magic. Why are you... The player knows, but... What? The cat is chewing on the cellar table. Because he's a loony. He's yeah. a cat. Uh, there, there are cats that go in the backyard and mm. they sometimes drive them a bit nuts. Yeah. Okay, so at the table today we have Paul. Who is Claw, um, diplomat, uh, army leader, uh, warlock, healer, the reason why Lani is known as Lani the Undying, um, stand behind her and heal her. <laughs> he was the party medic. Yeah, right. Uh, still am a lot of the time. True so, story. So <laughs> yeah, um, just a side thing as part of my introduction. At one point, I healed Lani for more than her original hit points throughout a battle. I think he did about double. Uh, it was <laughs> actually it was close to double. Yeah, I remember um, just how much. It was, yeah, it actually was pretty close to double, in one way or the other. Anyway. Um, uh, pretty boy, um, ritualist, alchemist. Um, Biggest thing for you is you are an ambassador of Darakin. Um, that's one moment, of your important titles. Yes, at the moment, ambassador of, uh, of Darakin, also to Darakin, and on top of being a diplomat. Mm. So down, down as junior grade, grade so, so uh, people, people don't, don't actually uh, understand uh, that, that one as well yet. Everybody knows the third assistant um, to, to the to the um, head of the diplomatic um, like um, oh, okay. uh, uh, is actually the important one. Mm -hmm. so, so when you get the third son, the one that always wins the quest. Sort of, yeah. Actually, in some respects. Well, that's because the, uh, was it the second son is the one that's the spare, and they don't want to break that one. That's right. <laughs> Yep, the air, the spare, and the other ones, whatever we can use him for. The priest. Generally the priest mm. in, in England. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, basically, uh, he's an also a damn good cook. Yeah. Uh, then I'll have Ferry and the three introduce yourself. Um, I, I can make myself ready. Mm. Uh, second. Mm. Um, I'm Ferry, I'm a diplomat. Where's my camera? Uh, one, that one? I think I'll go with this one over here. Because I think I'm going to get good comedic aspect out of it if I can make it work. Mm. As long as you don't mind me leaning over your books. Okay, I was just going to put in... Uh... She's got a new toy! 
very fancy. It is very fancy. It's a um, it's a D20, a D8, a D12, a D6. It's any dice you want it to be. Yes, I have. <laughs> like that. Yes. And, yes. I, I did see one of those and I went, that would be cool. Would you like a close look? You're yeah. welcome to. It is I've very got, nice. I've got something moderately, oh, it's a single disc. I've got um, something that um, someone here in Canberra yeah. 3D printed a whole bunch yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. And it's a string mm. of a set of uh, yep. disc dice. Yeah. Where the, each disc is a separate die. Mm. So you uh, just spin the dice you want to actually use. And you just wear it around your neck. Uh, I was going to say, I probably have a little bit of tough time handling that. Uh, otherwise, the what right, right, I'm holding yeah, said... You just oh, put, put, pull out the string on one side of your neck and just go flick. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. just being able to see close enough to see which, which it dice It would mean you... I wouldn't drop it every five seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, um, yeah. Calcrex, the mm -hmm. white dragon with the jazz wings. Just ignore all those black bits there. Nothing. What's to do? What's ever to do with the Queen of Darkness? Entropy. The fact that dragons shouldn't be multicolored in general, um, and the, the the blue scales that you you see on her here and there. Nothing to do with Bahamut. It's all, uh, it's all cosmetic. Of, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, she's cosplaying. Um, yeah. It's 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 not it's not actually gonna turn into a big deal somewhere down the path. She hasn't uh, ended up putting herself uh, in debt to gods for things she cannot possibly probably pay back. Um, but her soul is definitely owned by someone at the moment. By a little plant creature, tiny size. Um, <laughs> uh, kind Basically. Of, kind of. It's, um, it's more like a little tulip-shaped plant. Uh, I think tulip is the right word. Uh, and, uh, but instead of being green, this plant is black and grey. Yeah. It says eat an awful lot, but it's picked up a few words over the last couple of years, including include? death to the infidel. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, even in tiny speak, can become very menacing. It got close to Loki at one point. <laughs> um, the fact that it's ripped demons from their home planes and then consumed them, that's a little bit more concerning to Calcris. Well, it's a fade dark. Yeah, like a cat out. Or cat-like creature. <laughs> uh, it gets worse. We actually found out what its preferred food is. Yeah. yeah. Fairy dragons. Fairy dragons. Fae wild, actually. But yeah, fa yeah, fairy dragons is at the top of the list. Well, it, it but is, if it's fae yeah. wild as well, you any, know. Any fae wild, but fae fairy dragons yeah. is, is um, the best. And uh, she, she, so. she actually accompanies the Friday game. Uh, within mm. which there's a, fairy uh, dragon. there's a fairy dragon, so they get along great. Um, mm. No mm. problems whatsoever. There's there's I'm no food. There's, <laughs> there's no long stern talks with Calcrix shaking her finger, <laughs> and uh, Eep. Well, Eep, Eep kind of plays with said finger and ignores everything she says about please don't eat the fairy yeah. dragon. Uh, party members aren't food; they are friends. And they've just yeah. discovered that it speaks in colour. Yes. Yes. Uh, we, and we when don't it's know red, it's hungry. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, the primary colours are uh, like shouting to it, and its colours are that they change over yeah. uh, the yeah. course of the conversation. Uh, yeah. It, and it's and so like far, the only thing they've found that seems to be able to talk to it is uh, one of the other players' bags. Yes. Yes. So. Um, <laughs> yes, because I've got a bag that is very weird. <laughs> So, uh, aside from it. that, she just yeah, happens to have accidentally started her own coffee empire. Uh, and as a part of that, that was because she used to have a companion called Grindle Waffle Brewmeister, who was her coffee gnome, and used to follow her around and make her coffee drinks and help her set up camp. Basically, it was her squire. Um, but now he's, he's gone to, to manage her, her coffee stuff. Um, so she gets to carry all the coffee herself, but that, that's okay. She's made some good friends with coffee. Um, there's nothing to... special stuff. Yeah. There's nothing like stopping the avatar of the Queen of Darkness from consuming your entire party than offering to make it coffee. And have it work. Well, yeah, um, well in, in comparison, yeah. the other members of the party pulled out swords and attacked as their introduction. The dragon said, would you like some coffee? Uh, as that as that's introduction, 
As the other three members of the party failed on their introduction and were about to be consumed, it paused and went, coffee sounds great. But the natural 20 helped. Yeah, we, we didn't get high enough on the... That was the Friday night group who uh, oh, pretty much screwed get... themselves over. I'm just going to um, get my... Yeah, they, from the sound of it, they're pretty good at that. Yeah, they, they, they leapt before they looked and then fell 80 feet. They thought it was just over a railing. They didn't realise it was a pit. Until all three had jumped. There's a re one of the reasons why I've got the feet that I've got that give me a passive perception about here. I do, but they were, they were so concentrated on what they were doing, oh, yeah. they wouldn't even have gotten the passive perception. Wow. Look up and jump forwards. That was pretty, mm. that was pretty much it. Yeah. Ouch. So, uh, you can ha have interesting uh, sidelines happening in the campaign. And because, they do interact with each other. Uh, everyone's uh, actions are meaningful. Yeah. So we'll bring ourselves to uh, Grant, your, you and your character. So why don't you introduce your character to everyone? Okay. Um, Patrick Michael O'Shaughnessy, colloquially known as the old bastard. Um, probably best described as the grizzled NCO, senior NCO of regiment. Um, his hair is not as black as it was when he was a young, young fellow. Mm. It's now shot through with grey, and he knows it's been broken more times than you can probably remember. Probably remote Roman knows, it roams all over his face. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's flat and off centre. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> in ver and flat in various bits too. Um, so, he grew, you know, he's actually of um, Thiatian stock originally. Um, he rose through the. Um, the ranks of the various legions there um, until one time he was leading his troops on a um, the battle on a small hill fort somewhere and uh, unfortunately they had catapults uh, which launched large rocks large rocks at them and one smashed into his leg um, end result is he lost his leg most so people take an arrow to the knee. You took a you took a ballista ball. Well, well in this case, it was most likely well. a cannonball. <laughs> well, whatever. He basically he lost his leg, um, and the uh, Thaiatians, whilst they respect military prowess, he was no longer of any use to them, so he was discharged. He's ended up in Darakan now. Uh, he's lived on the streets in various parts, in many dives across the various parts of Nastara. Uh, recently. Um, he has basically picked up by one of the uh, the churches. Still work out exactly which one. We'll cover that later. <laughs> there are quite a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, who basically the the priests there showed to him that his life was not over, um, and he could continue to be of use to society, just a little bit in a slightly mm -hmm. different path to where he'd been as a mm -hmm. as a battle master. Mm -hmm. And currently your character has been uh, working out of Rockholm, the nation of dwarves, because they went to war with the giants, and for some reason you were inside the borders when they closed them. Fair enough. <laughs> because uh, uh, humans can't cross their borders when they close them. Yes. Right. How do I go home? You are home. <laughs> Well, I am home, yes. Uh, they'll, they'll probably do the opinion of, uh, well, uh, you can play, can't you? Yes. you be? And they have literally been going to war with giants. Much to the uh, annoyance of the people around them because the dwarves pulled it out of helping Darokin completely. Darakin right. has been smashed. Uh, in this year of the game, the master has taken over um, half of the nation of Darakin. Uh, and Darakin is the breadbasket of the region. Right. And because, because of the things the master, master has done and, and some of the characters have done, uh, spring has arrived without any regrowth. Oh dear, yeah. it's going to be hungry yeah. summer. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Friday's group has been uh, tasked with uh, fixing up the primal titans to get uh, seasons back in track. Because uh, uh, this group woke them up. Yes, it would. Always clear your messes. <laughs> they had a very good reason to wake them up. Yeah. But uh, they, they didn't know the uh, complete fallout of it. It sounded like a good idea at the time. It uh, I mean, if, if we hadn't woken them up, 
then we wouldn't have to wait a bit and worry about being hungry over summer. And, yeah, um, well, that is because everything would have been eaten. Uh, yeah. The master had pinched a bunch of their power, uh, and when they woke up, they took it back. Right. And because they'd been asleep for you know, about 10 or thousand years, it's been quite a while since they've roamed the world. And when I say primal titans, these guys are dinosaurs that are bigger than a city. Right. So think, think something that could uh, uh, cross Sydney and maybe a step. That's the sort of size you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, they're so big that they are uh, uh, making other sources of power around them look like nothing. And from given, you know, I've, given I've just come off 18 months on a place called Norfolk Island, <laughs> yeah. which is three kilometres, three yeah. miles by <laughs> five miles. Yeah. Five miles by, yeah, there, there were things that could sit on that and take up most of it. I think it would sit on it. Well, these dinosaurs, would, it wouldn't even be their foot print. Right. <laughs> and uh, they had done so on a place called the Isle of Dread, which is a very old module. Uh, though, eh, amusingly, uh, we may find it up here in one of the new Wizards of the Coast releases as they keep uh, refreshing old material. Yes. Uh, and uh, they had uh, just travelled into the Underdark to finish a quest they promised to do over 12 months ago. And didn't get to last session, last um, season. And should have done. A little sidetrack. And found well, out. A little bit. Uh, Nothing wrong with sidetracks. <laughs> over promise, I'm going to deliver against five. So that the world continues whether they do stuff or not. You'll hear events that may or may not have impact on you, and whatever you choose to do as a group becomes the important part of the story, mm. uh, even if some of the other parts really should be looked after. So with that, uh, the rest of these guys had just um, been in to see the King of the Dwarves and tell him about uh, why he is... Um, uh, supply chain under the ground had stopped. Something about demon infestation. Yes. Something about the eight demon lords coming back into the power. Oh, that's what the hat is. Okay. <laughs> so, well, each of the demon lords are actual gods of this setting. Mm -hmm. So to be a demon lord is to be a god. Yes. Uh, you will find uh, many things that are treated as uh, powerful creatures are uh, literally gods here. They have 180 different gods with probably about 600 different names describing them. We will need to have a discussion about exactly which one that provides the powers for doing the old bastard. That could be, uh, could be the uh, pantheon of a nation or a yep. single god. Right. Uh, or a principle. Mm -hmm. I think that can still be done in Lovewell. It can be, but in this case, it's more the Pantheon or Oh, yeah, God. it's normally going to be that. Mm. Yeah, because the uh, uh, Pantheon gives you the uh, guidelines about you uh, what you do. Yeah. You still have to be a worshipper of a god, even if you follow a principle or a Pantheon. Well, the, no, the Pantheon can provide all the powers of a single god. No, I'm talking about resurrection. No, even but it would, you, would, you would have one primary in your pantheon. So uh, if, if you uh, don't worship a pantheon and, or don't worship a god, then you have uh, enough days of uh, life as you can survive without sleep for. Yeah. So that's roughly about a week. Yep. Because yes, well, the, you know, the, gods, the gods protect adults mm -hmm. and the demons don't go after children. Yeah. So uh, once you become an adult, um, they uh, the gods protect uh, you from being having your mind assaulted. But be, but for some reason, children are immune to it. Okay. Children are immune. Which to means yeah, being a, being an atheist is committing suicide. Yeah. Or or just being someone who believes in gods but doesn't follow one is the yeah, same thing. Yeah, that's entirely valid. Mm -hmm. uh, as it's a world where the gods do walk amongst them. Mm. are fairly um, active in their day-to-day -day life. That's what makes it high magic, not the amount of magical items, not mm. the number of wizards, 
but how much the gods actually interact and mess with the way that so world. Yeah. yeah. Just as a, an aside for for Pat, is it possible that it's actually a god that found him, passed out in at least somewhere? Quite likely. Okay. Mm, yeah. Uh, they, that would fit with the backstory I'm trying to create. There's they actually, are completely hands on. A couple of them that look for people like you. Mm. And it may actually be Kagya who found you. Who? Kagya. K A G Y E R. He is the god of the dwarves. Mm. Right, okay. And uh, he's also the crafter god. Okay. But he he's not a what you'd call a benevolent god mm. but he's not a nasty god mm. he's someone who believes in creation art and um, artistry he's got all the you, social skills of an engineer I was going to say you may just be a, a means to an end for him oh yeah unfortunately most of the gods are like that yeah, yeah every, everyone's a cog mm. and so the storyline of Wrath of the Immortals is literally the gods of good fighting the gods of good right with the gods of evil being assholes in the middle <laughs> and keeping hidden and neither side is taking account of their actions as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. So the they both um, need to be spanked. Uh, main enemy of the Thyatan Empire, which is called the Alphatian Empire, mm -hmm. has begun a war of genocide on the region because they want to wipe one specific nation off the map so it will never be known to history. No, the the Thyatan? Oh uh, no, a place called Galantry. Right, okay. Uh, about a difference of opinion on how magic should be used. Right, okay. They are both magic-centric nations, mm -hmm. and uh, Alphatia has decreed that Galantry must die. Uh, heretics. Uh, Thyatin has said, um, nope, we're fighting you now. So Alphatia declared war on Galantry. Thyatis declared war on Alphatia. And then a third party decided to declare war on Alphatia, who wasn't even involved. Uh, called the um, uh, Haldanic Knights. Yes. So the Haldanic Knights and the Thyatans have something in common. They both have a high degree of their people are connected to the element of air. Right. So each person in the setting has an element they're tightly connected to. Uh, all the people of the region you're from pick one element as their core thing. The yes, way it's you. Four. Uh, yes, I'm just going to get to that. The way, way you can tell if they're uh, associated with Alphatia or not is if they uh, show aspects of two um, elements. Right. Because Alphatia's belief is uh, power for the sake of power. Uh, and that means that they teach everyone all the elements. Right. Uh, where that is seen as an abhorrent thing by the other people. And the gods themselves um, uh, favour those who have only one element. Right. No matter which side of the fence you fall. Yeah. Uh, you, it is more powerful to take more than one element, but that power comes at a cost. Mm. Everything comes at a cost. Yes. Yeah. And so how a, does that work then? Sorry. Uh, for, for your character's perspective, um, taking an element uh, means that one of your attributes is bumped up. Right. And uh, as an increased cap, uh, you can exceed the uh, attribute cap with it. Right. Yeah. And so it's just, it, when I say plus one, it's the bonus gets a plus one to it. Right. Uh, as most of the uh, stuff about your character, the uh, uh, attribute from one to twenty is really just uh, semantic. In the case of D and D, yeah. it's yeah. rarely referenced. Yep. So yep. Um, it's now just the bonus for most people. That's all they care about is the bonus. Yep. And so if you've got plus three, it becomes plus four. Right. And with the element, it can bump it up to plus six, which you can't get until you reach um, 20th level, 21st level otherwise. Yeah. That is the main place you get it from. Though humans will be able to also get it at uh, reaching 11th level. Because humans... Because humans. Humans are the most adaptable species. Yes. Does that mean that Pat, being human, would have... Oh, that needs to be factored into... Sorry to take you back. No, you, you could pretty much increase one attribute by two. Right. As in the bonus by two or the... The bonus by two. Right. Okay, I'll have to work that out. Well, what's your major stat? Well, we Yeah, go. that goes pretty... Um, 
Yeah, okay. We'll get one of them and probably that one so you're going healer. Yeah. Which makes him as charismatic as me. And when I focus my um, elemental affinity, he's actually getting more charismatic than me. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so, so yes, yes uh, unless I find another way to there will be other abilities that come uh, in and other stuff. Miscellaneous bonus, we put it. Yep. But we'll worry yeah. about um, all the different rules as we'll you play we'll get because we'll the, the idea is to enjoy playing the game yep. before caring about the rules. Yep, that's fine. And yep, that's fine. If you don't like the game, then you don't have to learn all the extended rules. Yes, sure. Uh, the reason I've done that is uh, a few people want just hack and slash, or they just want a uh, story, or they just um, want a game that is finished in six sessions. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> there are some GMs where that's basically what they do. They run what's basically multi-session one-shot. And most campaigns in Canberra yeah. finish after six sessions. That's what I'm saying. They're yeah. multi-session one-shots. That, that's the Aboriginal rule. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... They take longer than that to go through a single bloody module. Does this say, have you done the summary? And I was going to ask Kesley if she wants to give the summary at this stage. Yes, because it's about time. Yeah, for sure. So, um, as mentioned before, we decided to finally follow up on that year-long task of going to find out what was going on in the Underdark. So through going through the uh, uh, Alpine, seeing the mass exodus of the elves as their trees are now dying and they need to be moved. That's a whole other story that we will share at another time. Um, so we were going responsible for that in some no, way, shape, we, or form. No, we no, are no, we are responsible for that actually. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Having their trees. Uh, she was talking well, about the um, whole uh, Luel and the Shadow Wolf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, that is our fault. <laughs> I thought it was. Yeah, that, <laughs> little bit, little bit off. Well, to it's be fair, if we really want to say whose fault it is, it really is Luel's fault. If you really want to point fingers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's really, it's really because Luel is no, trying to save the elves. Camera, but they, I'm, yes. There's a dragon pointing at Luel. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Calyrex. Yeah, yeah, the other elves don't see it this way yet, but in the long run, it's to save them. Um, yeah, because if they were to stay put, they were for sure, like, the master would win, and then they would be uh, killed. Anyway, we move on. We're trying to get to the Underdark. There is a place through Alfheim um, where we can see there was a big monster that has escaped. Oh, no, I wonder if that's going to be something to drop back to. Um, so we get down to the Underdark, and we're just like, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. And that's where we find out, yes, there are demons everywhere, and everybody's going crazy. Um, we end up finding three or so, uh, yeah. I guess, refugees at this mm -hmm. stage. Yeah. Um... Various <laughs> throughout, um, including our favorite uh, goblin, or yeah, no. peoples. No, no. Pe pe our peoples. The, the gnome who is not there. Yes. Yeah, we, our favorite gnome, gnome peoples who he is not there. Don't ask him. He's not there. Um, <laughs> pe pe peoples, so, peoples the never lasting. <laughs> through various fights and finding out some things along the way uh we find out that it the demon lords have essentially taken over the underdark and everybody and anybody who's down there if they cannot defeat the demons then they are turned mad and used as demon food so um we got the eight names i'm not going to say them out loud because half of them i can't actually say um and we need to find a way out of there so we found our way out of there um, because there were dark pixies that were stuck in jars that were being used as light sources. And so we made a deal, thanks to Cal Crix's knowledge of Fey Law, um, that they, we would release them in exchange that they would help us get out of the Underdark. Um, so, how nice. They start... <laughs> They, they go ahead and help us, and Lottie was one of the first ones to go, 
And, oh, how nice. She refused, or she made the save that she didn't have to polymorph, but that was unfortunately the wrong thing to do. Um, <laughs> everybody else failed the save, and they were all changed into pixie-sized pixies themselves. Lonnie had to be picked up and flown. Uh, thank you, Eep. Um, she was and, and we... Uh, flew across until we found a one foot hole in the ceiling. In the ceiling, or maybe it was like smaller than that. It was so everybody, everybody was able to fly through there. Lonnie had to have every bone squished and pulled through, so she was made very skinny. Hence the name Lonnie Fettuccini. Um, so that's where that name came from. And because of pixies and they were dark fae, she didn't die. Yeah, I got, I got to feel... <laughs> the is she's two-dimensional. <laughs> she also felt all of that. Yeah, so I got because to feel all dark of that. <laughs> because dark fate. Yeah. They so we <laughs> make our way into Rock Home and we mom. use our little uh, <laughs> note from the Dwarven <laughs> King that we're allowed in. Um, so <laughs> we go in, we meet with uh, General Ben Fohammer, um, and Gnomish Mechanical Priest Cog uh, throws a lot. And it was interesting that there is a gnome working with a dwarf because the dwarves don't believe gnomes exist. Um, they find it in the front. Yeah, yes. An to their, so, to their for them to be working together is a big deal because yes. of this war on the giants that they've been talking about. Yes. Um, so we were taken to the king. Uh, we gave our whole story of what is happening in the Underdark and why their supply lines were, were cut off um, and all that stuff. And with that, the king was happy with the report, even though it took us some time. And he agrees that he will spare some of his forces to the Derrickan army for the fight against the Master, but not too many, as the fire giants, quote-unquote, have gone mad and can't be reasoned with, according to him. Um, so we sent our report to Redrian. Um, apparently there was a skyship waiting for us, but we were enjoying our relaxation and partying with the dwarves. And that was... The Red Rain's our bus. And that was the story. Yes, and uh, Red, Red Rain hires various people to investigate things for him. Uh, he acts very much like uh, a leader of the Harpers. Mm -hmm. So anyone who knows Forgotten Realms will understand that reference very well, which is why I use it. Mm -hmm. And he um, basically uh, pays well for people to uh, do good things around the world. Mm. Uh, he's not the sort to pay for assassination or no, no, um, no. destabilizing things. But he generally I, I, pays for well, information. He doesn't pay for the destabilization. However, one of the things on our list of things we've got to get holds up a whole city. There's a flying city that is held up by a device we have to get. Right. It's a starship drive, and he sort of needs it. Okay. <laughs> because he wants to put his ship back together. Except at this stage, it looks as if he might be uh, repairing me, repairing it while inside the Dwarven City. Uh, the, sorry, the Nomi City. Yes. Because uh, he wants to get it out of our fate here. Yes, well, moving the city and then removing the motor. <laughs> yeah. Which is fine. Excuse me, will I land this city? Yes. And then take the means by which it flies. Yes, uh, they did learn that he crashed on this planet 30,000 years in the past. Mm. We rescued him from a mirror. Okay. <laughs> he was stuck inside a mirror of life trapping. And did somebody put him there? Well, we don't know this. <laughs> uh, he he uh, died at the time that the world got blown out of its axis. Uh, when a nation known as Blackmore uh, detonated a uh, starship, which is the ship he uh, had crash landed on. I was experimenting on it, it blew up. And he was the engineer of that starship. And in saving the uh, world, well, <laughs> equivalent of that, uh, he almost um, uh, 
failed to stop the world from being exploded. He did lessen the damage. By in doing so, the world was knocked out of the moment. Right. Uh, and if you ever heard of the Blackmore setting, no. that's one of the oldest um, D and D settings out there, done by one of the co-creators. Right. So Guy Gax and I can't remember the other guy's name. Paul would probably remember who the other core oh, guy I is. I have the name on the tip of my tongue, but it is not coming out. <laughs> And there's, there's a thousand RPGs out there going, shame on them. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrible with names. Not me. So, uh, that is an area that had developed high tech, and because of that, um, elves are completely anti tech. Right. Uh, anyone who is developing um, science beyond um, bows and arrows is generally frowned upon, if not outright undermined by the elves. Dave Emerson, and it's almost entirely Dave's. Yes, uh, Blackmore is mostly his, yeah. except for a few people who didn't get on it. Oh yeah, there's, his, none of this stuff has been put out by a single writer. Mm -hmm. None of it. But the setting uh, instigation the setting was him, his. whereas Greyhawk was all going oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they had other people come in and write for them. Mm. So Mistara has had all of them write for it. So Mistara is not Greyhawk, is it? It's no. no, it's, it's its own thing. thing. It's its own thing. It's, it's had all the Greyhawk, all the Dragonlance, all the Ravenloft. It's an inspiration for a majority of the other settings. Uh, they took stuff from this to build Ravenloft. They took stuff from this to build Birthright. They took stuff from this to build um, some of the Planescape stuff. Uh, but they went in a different direction. Mm. And so this is one of the uh, original settings. So you you find yourself uh, meeting with these people at one of the few inns that you can sit in comfortably. Everything else is designed for dwarves. Mm. And when I mean designed for dwarves, you're pretty much having to squat uncomfortably to sit on the seat. And, well, at um, least I only have to stretch up one leg, not both. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is designed for me in this world, generally. Well, you do find that there is uh, missing stools for people who can just sit without um, needing them. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one who nicks them. <laughs> I've got a bag of holding just full of chairs and stools. Uh -huh. And they call it uh, the Knight's Rupert Inn. Yeah. And it is a, a franchise found in most capital cities now. Yes. Mainly because it's from that uh, franchise that Redrian runs his uh, intelligence network. Right. And, and if you're a portals. member of that intelligence network, you can teleport between them. It's all the many worlds type stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all designed yeah. to um, stop those who are not devoted to him using it. Mm. So if he's your god, um, if he's your patron, if he's your uh, uh, person that you're actually working for, then generally using his network is um, uh, able to be done. Uh, you can sometimes take other people through. But that's generally a negotiation. Right. Mm. Uh, so it can't be used to transport armies or undermine people's defences. Yes. But it does allow you to then strengthen people's defences and stuff like that. Let's yeah, yeah, just drop two dozen high-level adventurers on your head. It's lining up with that. <coughs> that's philosophy, so mm. there we go. Mm. <laughs> And uh, uh, he, his philosophy as a god is to say that uh, immortals need to uh, keep out of the affairs of mortals. And immortals he means by most of the gods. He said for him. Mm. I know he even says um, he shouldn't be dictating uh, for you what to do. He gives you um, uh, options and lets you choose what to do for yourself. Right. Uh, he doesn't believe in making people do what he wants. Mm because uh, it's all about um, guiding people, not by um, saying, thou shalt do this or lose your power. Yeah, he's feeling very much for Redrian, he's feeling very much with mm. now, I see this character going, so... So, so end up. Uh, while you're there, you meet up with um, these uh, fine adventurers, realising that one of them was a general in the army you served. The one that your entire unit got completely demolished down. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's a, a tribesman sort of looking person. Very, very intimidating to come across the general in and in, uh, away from the battlefield. Especially since he looks older than you do. Yes. Because he looks ancient. He's the one at the top left. 
<laughs> he's only about 35. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was on the other side of the wall with catapults, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. But well respected, good at his job, but got over got over, over, overpowered yes but there was uh the previous year's battle where uh they did lose lots of people to uh catapults and uh more lower tech mm-hmm. it was in the current year that they had high tech thrown against them so mm-hmm. is that general drachma yes yeah he's generally drachma <laughs> oh, <shush. laughs> um, i was well, waiting for that but, oh sure he, he kept the court when he bought it uh, are you going to try and get your original name back? Why he can't. He can't. He gave it away. Yeah, he gave it to. He could ask a bit to be regifted, give it, give another gift in exchange. Mm. He came across a fey dragon uh, who asked uh, uh, Jeremy's character to give him his name. Can I have your name, please? And so he get, yeah, okay. so he spoke his name, and then he lost his name. Yep, right. that, that's that fey dragon's name now. So we just don't buy it. We did for a while. Yeah, until he worked until, out. Until uh, Akira get himself named him. Oh, so a good no, he stopped coming to his old man back again. Yes. <laughs> so so well, a god named him. Yes, which means you can't give that one away. Because that's a god gift. Right. That's not giftable. <laughs> so it happens again, it's going to fail. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> it depends on who asks. <laughs> it does depend on who asks. If it's one of the fake gods, then yeah. But... The amusing thing was the player knew what was happening the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't. But the character had no uh, experience dealing with fake previously, so. Yeah. So he said, yes. He believed them. He thought they were nice people. Yeah, here's my name. <laughs> Drachnamir. What's my name now? Not tracked to me. Because it wasn't a swap. He didn't take it in exchange. Well, they also, uh, well, it was, used to be Paradis. Yeah. yeah. And so now it's tracked to me. And. Uh, so after he lost Paradis, he became no idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, false was uh, worth mentioning. Did he ever call him shit for brains? <laughs> Only well, at, at the time they were, <laughs> at the time they were struggling a lot and went, uh, oh, well, at least it was you and not us. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, his gift of the name allowed them to pass the dragon. Yes. Oh. So he took one for the team. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Quite the joy. Yeah, he was he was officially nameless for a while. Capital N, that was his name. He was simply not going for Yes. <laughs> It wasn't even tribes and formerly known as because every deed done by the other person was then associated to the dragon. <laughs> so not only did he give up his name, he gave he gave up the deeds to the name. Right. And the history associated with it. Yes. So the rest of the party were going, We remember you being here, but we also remember this dragon by that name. <laughs> Were you really here? <laughs> yes, because we remember the events and the name as two separate items. There. So, uh, coming in, uh, would Lowell like to describe how he looks? <sighs> Short for an elf, which means he's only seven feet tall. I remember, you've just come from the Underdark. Just come from... Oh, I'm a pixie. You, you had come back into your normal form. Ah, uh, normal form. All right, well. The pixies only did that while you were going through we were the one-foot tunnel. Yes. Um, so, yes. Way, way taller than humans. But, as I said, short for an elf. He's only seven feet tall. Most of them are about seven and a half. Uh, very pale skin. Uh, Blue-black hair. Uh, blue eyes, dresses in blue. Even in combat gear, he's wearing what looks like a blue silk court outfit, or at least really nice dress clothing. Um, carries an elven style shield and a draconic um, elf style sword, which he never draws. And he has a uh, caster's rod. Oh, I can hope not. You in it in. Pardon? I can hope not. You in it in. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't do it at all. <laughs> well, it depends. If we've just walked in, that's what I'm wearing. If you're not, not, then my weapons, weapons, the weapons and the shield are upstairs. You just walked in. Okay, we just walked in, so yes. Uh, I'm the one that is tidy and clean and not dusty. And my hair is nice and doesn't need brushing out. And you do, do remember him as being one of the army's commanders. Right. <laughs> so as an, and also also a machine gun of long experience. Uh, uh, was based out of a fort on the Great Lake of the Nation. Right. Which you heard fell after uh, a year after you had uh, lost your leg. Yeah. Well, yeah, when I was in the depth of a, yeah. of a wine jug somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we spent most of a good portion of a year up on that wall blowing away assaulting troops mm. and doing basically nothing else. Right. They spent, spent a big chunk of downtime doing that. Mm. Okay, so would uh, Ariadna like to describe how you walk in? Uh, well, from Father Pat's uh, perspective, you just see white scales and then suddenly boops down to mid-size into a dragon. And she looks like this. Because one of the other players happened to find a dragon that happened to look like my white dragon with white scales. Um, I think it comes from... How um, I Met Your Dragon. There you go. Mm. How I... How it, I it's one of the kids dragon. of Toothless. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Um, one of the children dragons. So she, she's a white dragon, but has um, uh, tips and bits of black scales and a couple of blue scales on her. Um, and she'll she'll be accompanied by her plant-like mm. friend. Um, that walks? Uh, it, she The plant-like friend rides on her shoulder at, at the moment. Um, and they'll be so talking. But the dragons come through the door. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So she was like large size as she was walking up to the. Well, I haven't seen that because I'm inside the. I'm the, inside the, the pub. pub so, <laughs> but as um, as Lewis walked in and opened up that door, you would have seen just scales behind him, and then that kind yeah. of downsized into a dragon. And then just as they walk in, she leans over and goes <sighs> to Lula's hair, so it's all mussed up for a second. And then her and the the plant giggle as Lula's hair. Retidies itself all back up. As my cloak wafts along with the hair and everything mm. settles back down again. The cloak didn't waft from her breath either. <laughs> that was the cloak. No, no. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Calcrix is only 12. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the idea of messing with the elf's hair is still amusing to her. Yes. And uh, you do recognise Calcrix like, also serving in yeah. the same army? That I served in, or that mm -hmm. In fact, you would have heard of a story about the great white dragon that fell um, in the first battle, and um, she was carried off the field by a very large plant like creature who um, not even the undead of the master's armies would come near as um, she was carried from the field. And there's no gold scars on her wing that again is another color that they pretend is just a part of the whole camouflage of of, of cosplaying as other elements in a dragon uh, next we'll have uh kesley's character walk in so uh lani is very polynesian looking uh human uh, I would say maybe after it, what did I give, say that, how tall she was, like five two five somewhere between five two and five six somewhere around there, um, and yeah, just very buff. Usually has a trident on her on her back, along with some other weapon or weapons. I, I was gonna say, aren't there her. like all the weapons? Yeah, usually. Yeah. Yeah, so that that whole weapons. meme of like leave your weapons at the door and it just never stops when, as you're taking them off, kind of thing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, she'll she'll walk in and she'll laugh along with Calcrix as she's blowing Luel's hair. But I'm sure what it really looks like is Luel very much looks like that uh, romance anime 
kind of guy with his hair and cherry blossoms in the background. Yeah, that, that, that's Lul. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Lottie will, will be playing along with Cal Craig, so I'm just like, hey. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so, and then she'll, she'll definitely try to walk up to the bar, get a drink for herself, and the you know, Patriots as, as yeah. well. She's a very jovial, friendly type. Yeah, that's actually fair. The, on first entry, anything you do to my hair or anything like that, my cloak will make it look good. Yeah, that, that, you're used fair. to that. <laughs> and so uh, then we'll have uh, Jeremy introduce himself uh, and how he looks. I was going to say gen general, the general. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to duck to the bathroom and. Uh, oh yeah, and Lonnie was one of the other commanders as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, the final person that you probably don't actually notice walking through the door because he's normally. Locked in the shadows, off to the side. No one paid attention to him. Um, and quite literally, as I say, if he decides to, he's almost invisible, almost at all time. Um, the but as I say, you realise the fact that uh, yeah, this very old uh, looking guy, uh, looking uh, uh, tribesman, blonde skin. Like a metallic looking brown hair and beard, but now with significant grey streak to it. Um, yeah. Green yeah. eyes, tattoos all over his body. So, um, but yeah, otherwise, early slender, medium build, would appear to be uh, fairly average and unnoticeable. Um, you do realise that, in fact, yes, you had seen him from a distance, standing up in front of the armies at various times. Uh, and he had awards at the end of the third the seasons, um, and uh, and someone who was injured in the war, quite possibly one that uh, he personally come by and uh, gone through. His, his, he did make a point of trying to catch up with uh, families and injured, wounded, um, uh, as, at any time during up, during and after the the. The, the war seasons. Um, but yeah, otherwise, he's been wearing, uh, like, he's got to wear armor, he's got a bow on his back, door on his side, and so. Otherwise, not be good. I was going to say, Jeremy, what yeah. kind of tattoos do you have? Are they like just like. Uh, swirls and things, or are they like animals, or...? Uh, they're, they're actually tattoos that are uh, gifted to him um, when the... Uh, I'm thinking, uh, they have cultural meaning. Yeah, I was trying to visualise what they look yeah. like. They, um, they're, 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 they're actually a gift from his totems uh, while we are in Castle Amber, uh, yeah. Where he's been first with the amber armband for Nithia. Yeah. Um, that they replaced that armor and, and armband. So, part of the totems, part of the, 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 the thing, definitely includes a, uh, a snake like armband on his left arm. But the, uh, as I say, part of the whole process of protections that it provides, uh, it provides a lot of, as I say, not so much, uh, probably a, a, a cross between the uh, the sort of um, Maui world type stuff yeah. you get, but with a lot more animal and uh, photogenic motifs throughout. Yeah, yeah there'll, yep. there'll be one so, one for each of your totems plus yep. various other things. Things like, uh, oh, what what are the clans again? Tiger clan, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Thank uh, you. Sorry. Uh, well, I guess uh, he's someone who, quite literally, if you're not looking for him, you won't normally see him. Mm. I was going to say, I have a feeling that Pat, now that I can see the screen because Martin's gone, is the guy with the really long blonde hair and the beard. Because that doesn't sound like that's any of our other characters. That's not what Pat. What's it say on there? Uh, it could be somebody else for an old thing. Uh, I think that might have been one of my That, says, that actually ah. says Father Pat. Oh, 
Oh, does it? Yeah. Is that part of the quick yes. The quick image of Mark was on fire. It's the closest one I had. Oh, the closest image, but not uh, quite what he looks like. Yeah. Uh, uh, most of the pictures end up being the closest image I can find. Eventually, yeah. players will find images and I will replace it. But I just start off with uh, a representation. Yeah, just a, yeah. a basic representation. Okay, yeah. And cool. that's that's a paladin esque sort of look. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've, got well, one my, I've got one actually on my character sheet for hmm. for use for that one. Yeah, because it's not quite how yeah, well, I see the character. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's not to say that that's yeah. not exactly how your character looks. It's yeah. just to <clears> give <throat> a rough idea yeah. that you're human and that you yeah. mm. uh, dress very militaristic. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, so so basically. Pat sitting in the corner with his back to the wall. Um, he sees these characters coming in. He recognises um, at least one of them, being the one who came to his hospital bed, um, and just raises his tankard <laughs> and just nods at him. But that's about it at this stage. <laughs> so that was Drachmar. That yeah. was Drachmar. Yes, yeah. Drachmar would have. He, he would recognise Drachmar as having come. Yeah. Because yeah. Jer Jeremy's character had gone yeah. and uh, when he was uh, wounded gone and seen all the troops he could yeah unlike many of the other uh, generals of the army yeah so he's he's one of the most feared generals because mm. he represents another nation mm. and a as scary as the actual leader of that nation mm. and it's, it's a, a nation, nation that has spent its, its entire culture warring, warring with itself yeah so i mean i, I think the, the best way, way to conceptualize pat is he's the regimental of major type yeah is that grizzled old you know won't, won't take any shit, shit from, the, from, from, from the from the young troops, um, and most officers listen to his advice. <laughs> well, listen to his advice when given. Yeah, <laughs> which would be a good reason why you would have gone out into Rock Home to uh, go for a different uh, uh, form of war, because you probably didn't want to stick around and uh, not be able to help out in the uh, war where you're main in. Well, yeah, basically, and the, the, the idea being that. Um, his patron, so it's God, mm. has, has sent him here, mm -hmm. um, and with you know, the, his life is not over, he has a role to play, and this is where it starts. So have you described <laughs> yeah. how you look to them? I did describe yeah. it very early on, um, yeah. as I said, the thiation. Um, once upon a time, you know, his hair was jet black, like most thiations, however his hair is now very short, buzz cut, mm. you know, think um, Clint Eastwood out of... <laughs> Yep, yeah. yep. That's that's why I'm like that. Um, that does not look. Yeah. Like, that's too much hair. Exactly. Uh, 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 I'm like, no, that, yes. did it's I hear like wrong? Did I already? Well, hear more more like mine, actually. <laughs> yeah. A little bit more than mine, but not a great deal more than mine. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah so if you if you figure if you find an image of Clint Eastwood, you know, from uh, what's the um, that thing? Yes. Hogan's Unforgiven. Um, no, the one in, one where the he's Mod, a, he's the a, modern army setting one. And we goes to uh, Panama. Yeah, I, I know which one you mean. I know Clint Eastwood very well. My parents watched all Yeah, of the so that's, that's the one he's in. <laughs> so he's, he's that grizzled NCO who's, yeah. He's good at what he does. He's very good at what he does, yeah. but he's slightly on a better, mm. on, a, on a different journey, shall we say now. Mm. Um, Which is not hit first, ask questions later. <laughs> when uh, Pat That's raises a his uh, <laughs> a thing, yes. drinking tankard to you, Dracula, do you hmm? go over to talk to him? Um. Um, well, I think it's like that him, uh, uh, it's ministered a lot of his soldiers over the time and mm -hmm. uh, wounded, but. Whether or not actually recognises him, is there actually likely to be any specifically identifying features that he's going to remember? I mean, he has got a good memory, and he certainly does know people well, but yeah. yeah well, so, so Pat would recognise Drakmanar, whether he recognises it, Pat, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. if, if Pat stood out in battles, <laughs> yes, absolutely. We were one of the survivors. Well, well, so, so, he, so, I mean, the way yeah, I think of Pat but is, you know, Pat you know, the, the senior yep. centurion. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Thing, thing to take account of, particularly if Jeremy's talking, this mic is really, really good. Mm. If you're talking here, nothing else is going to get hurt. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sorry about that, Jeremy. You yeah. go first, mate. No, no, you're right. Yeah. Uh, but I was just saying, like, yeah, like, if, if uh, it's probably the fact that Pat actually notices, or apparently notices Pat Dima, um, he's probably enough to spike back in his interest, mm. and then he'll go ahead for it. 
that, that uh, I should have explained a bit of that kind of what's prompted by asking is that someone's actually noticed you walking in. So, yeah. Yeah. And did you walk uh, in in human uh, form? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. For, for most of oh, them, a blended race is considered um, abhorrent. Yeah. Because uh, history records them all as being uh, villains. Right. Uh, Effectively, they've all got three names. <laughs> Just like all the good, the bad, the ugly. No matter how it's spelt. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that history doesn't record any half race person as being good. Right. Because all the so good just, ones didn't actually make a name for themselves so, because people were trying to kill them if they did. Yes. Well, just well, they the, the very carefully presented from beginning to end mm. until they died as a single race. Mm. So there are some short, shortish lived elves <laughs> that are known as just elves. <laughs> Mainly because uh, it all comes via curse or magical experiment. Yeah. Right. Because they are literally it's, different species. It's like saying, um, can you get a cat and a dog to breathe? Yeah. It's the same as trying to get an elf and a human to breathe. It, it takes one. magic. Mm. Or a magic no, Not even that. Mm. Because those those are very closely related species. Mm. Mm. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, well, I'll catch him a little and Greeting soldier. Sorry, I didn't hear you. He said greeting soldier. And um, greetings. Uh, yeah. You are uh, far from home. It's been a long couple of years. Very long couple of years. We're in we're in Red Rain's place. Everything is away from home. <laughs> yes. We're in Red Rain's place in Rock Home and he's a yes. human. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Rock home closed its borders. Except for people like us, because yeah. we're special. But you didn't go through the borders. Oh, this, not true. this would also indicate yeah. that, that Father Pat is special too. That's right. He's definitely, <laughs> he's definitely the special. Uh, <laughs> of the day. Hide the mm -hmm. paste. <laughs> I'm okay. not going to go there. I didn't say that. Uh, so uh, as you're greeting uh, each other, you see the uh, well-dressed um, Redrian uh, walk into the room. He has definitely a uh, weird fashion sense because his hat basically is wider than he is. I want that hat. You know, brim out to here. Nice. Stetson. <laughs> Texan Stetson. No, no, no. No, not even that. This is... <laughs> Seriously, just a big cone hat thing. <laughs> so not sombrero we, style. <laughs> I was going to say sombrero, right? <laughs> not, not quite. It's more floppy. You'd almost think of it as an Australian Akubra with an extended brim. Yeah. Cal Crix gets distracted trying to figure out how he's got like, keeping the hat on his head and it's not falling over his body. And it's so actually, big. You can do it the same way that this works. <laughs> There's actually a Stiffen. thing around the rim that stiffens it, that actually holds it out. Yeah. yeah but, Otherwise, but, this would flop. He does, he's doing the same thing, except with some wire. Calcrix is also 12, so... She, well, yeah. She, she, she's it, like, how? Well, it must be magic, but I want to look. So she's now kind of got her head almost upside down and too close to Redrian as she's Cal trying Cricks. to see up Cal inside Cricks. his, his hat. Calcrix. Calcrix. Stop trying to look up Redrian's nose. <laughs> His nose. I'm it looks like his you hat. are. From the angle you're doing it, it's the same thing. Redrian transfers being... the hat to Calcrix and puts it on Calcrix's head. Calcrix just sits up straight and smiles. Purrs almost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got a hat. Except this is now flying down over your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever is holding up a red Redrian's head doesn't. <laughs> well, yes. And Redrian has a bit of a goatee going. Mm. Uh, he looks. Uh, Roughly around 20-ish. Uh, but he's looked roughly about 20-ish for as long as you've known him. Which is probably about the last six months. <laughs> mm. And uh, this guy's history is true. <laughs> and he's said to be one of Durrican's merchant princes, which means uh, he's got a fortune. 
Right. Uh, only their merchant princes are uh, that. The title mer merchant prince means uh, you have lots of money at your disposal. Lots and lots. And how many prince? How many merchant princes have Derek and got? It's only about a couple of dozen. It's it's about ten. Yeah, yeah. There's ten of them in the richest city in the in the world. And there's only ten. They are stinking rich. Rich, exactly. Yes. And they are generally head of clans. Yeah. Uh, or uh, trade emporiums or organizations, all those sort of things. And Redrian's organization is uh, Redrian's Investigation Bureau. So let's assume Redrian is the one that has brought <laughs> yes. Pat out of the, <laughs> out of the gutter. <laughs> well, he finds purpose for people who have no purpose. G'day, boss. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, nice to see you're doing well. Uh, you haven't got any dwarves killed recently, he says. No, no. Check them to the best of my ability. Everybody looks at Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Says, well, um, don't worry. Uh, I've got a new mission for you. Uh, uh, you're not afraid of heights, are you? Good, good. So he don't says. have to climb any ladders. I'll be fine. <laughs> no ladders necessary. <laughs> good. Because <laughs> I find it a little difficult. <laughs> are you sitting or standing at the stage? Who? Hmm. You. I'm sitting. Okay, so it's not necessarily obvious that you're missing a leg. Correct. Right. <laughs> so, Calcris is kind of like, I don't understand what they mean, but okay. <laughs> because, uh, so, glad to see that the rest of you have also made it here today. Uh, I've gotten word that your meeting with the king was useful. If a little late, but yes, it, it worked, it did what it was needed to do, and we did what we needed to do. Well, I'm sure it was in a timely manner. Timely enough. Uh, if Darakin had fallen, it would not be timely. Exactly. Where there's life, there's hope. Exactly. We could have done it earlier, we didn't, we still got it done in time. So, yeah. It could have been there's worse. Time to time. Mm. You could have been stuck in the uh, Shadowlands when the demons attacked. That would be a little dicey. More than a little. Well, but the case is that if we had gone there when we first were going to do it, probably would have been stuck. Yeah, quite probably. So it was better timing, even though it was worse timing. Though he has gotten news from many elven um, settlements outside of Alfheim who heard your message. Excellent. That there's apparently not a single Elven settlement who didn't hear it. Over the globe. They got a long way. Uh, reports are coming uh, out of Alphatia that they heard it there too. They were back in that the <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I didn't expect that to go that far. Uh, you, you tapped, tapped into, into their... their tapped into um, the trees. Yeah, you, you tapped, tapped into their entire network. network. Um, I did. And, and then, then apparently broke it. I did burn out the comms communication centre stage. For, for, the, for all the settlements. Oops. Well, well they, they got, got a message out. out. Yeah. The last message is over here. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's all repairable. <laughs> we'll just... Take a little bit to repair. <laughs> Just a little magic. Yes. Yes. So uh, I've uh, made arrangements to help you uh, de deal with Cass. Uh, sorry, with Lani's little um, uh, side quest before uh, it's too late. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that is something we really do need to do, and that mm -hmm. was going to be next. We need to get her to her throne really soon. Yes. Like now. That's okay. There is a um, skyship sky coming in called yes. the uh, Griffin Wind. Uh, 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 even before he finishes, because Calcrix uh, has already heard that the skyship's coming, she's kind of like, Skyship? Yep. <laughs> wow. this, 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 this dragon is wriggling with excitement. Yeah, <laughs> and she can fly. Yeah. And but make, and it's make, a skyship. I know, it means you don't have to fly. But yeah, Calcrix is making squeaky noises. Yeah. <laughs> Cute ones? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone like... would tell a dragon it doesn't sound cute. cute. <laughs> no. Calcrix has charisma coming out the kazu. Yes. And has a little plant-like creature staring at people to make sure they laugh. Yeah, well, that's true. 
Oh, you by the way, at this point, the little plant-like creature on Calcrix's shoulder pulls a cookie out of the bag and hands it to you. The plant pulls cookie out of the bag. Yes. 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 Oh, take that. They're good for you. And Pat looks at the cookie. <laughs> looks Eat at it. the plant. No, they're good. They're also good for you. <laughs> uh, in fact, you should eat one. <laughs> no, they're not addictive. <laughs> Still not sure that this is the right thing to do. I mean, you see okay. some very strange things in the bottom of wine jugs, but plants handing out cookies is takes the cake, so to speak. I, I, will, I, will, take, I, will, take, I will take that cookie <laughs> and eat it. And, and eat immediately produces another cookie. They're perfectly safe. They are good for you. They are a, they are a I take the cookie. Mm -hmm. They are a magical protection. I think eat. <laughs> Can you cookie. hear a bake on? I, I was gonna say if, if you give a sec, if if Pat actually puts it in his mouth. And I gently nibble at it. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, takes the cookie out of his mouth. <laughs> before before it gets too far, Caprix goes. She means the evil god Exantiotl. All eating the cookies do is they help you heal, but they also mean that the evil god Exantiotl cannot force you into his service. Do not service. his name. <laughs> of course, um, if you say it three times, he might appear. He, he, <laughs> twice. Said, said god uh, works for the master. The, or the master works for said god. Uh, right? yes. no, number five is the magic number for most things here. Yeah. So if you say it, count the five, so if you say it five times, that was well out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. 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 One, two, yeah. three, yeah. four, so four, and one. Said right. said god, uh, the master works for said god, and. So the cookies are a preventative to stop you from being forced to serve him against your will. And you would have heard of that god's name. He's known as the Corrupter. Yes. In that case, Pat will... Finish the, the cookie. cookie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Still not absolutely sure that this is the right thing to do, but it seems to be the, the, the best also, thing to do. <laughs> um, so they have healing properties. So, yeah. so uh, like... Uh, Unlike most settings, magical healing doesn't restore damage. It will heal your wound. So if your nose is broken in a certain angle when they cast magical healing on you, it will stay in that broken angle, but it will heal in that way. Very, yes. uh, this is the, uh, actually, <laughs> fortunately, I'm also a surgeon. <laughs> Which would explain why it's always in different angles after combat. Yeah, because you're being healed by non-surgeons. <laughs> Exactly. Mm. I can break it. And I, put I it can back just to no, thank you. <laughs> and, and, and you have learned to take out arrows before healing people. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I can just imagine. Otherwise, they get healed in the person. Yep. Exactly right. If we went into your home, yeah. if you had like that that corridor of like photos over the years, <laughs> your nose at a different angle. Exactly. <laughs> it's like that great scene out of. Um, Asterix goes to Asterix with Cleopatra yes, with the Sphinx. Yes, yes. <laughs> whack, 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 whack. Yes. <laughs> Can't help themselves. Okay, so he says that the skyship should be able to get you to the Isle of Dread uh, fairly quickly. Okay. Try not to get eaten. Well, that's a given. At risk of friend. asking a difficult question, how do we get to said star skyship? <laughs> it was coming here. Mm -hmm. It's coming here, mm -hmm. yes. But skyship up there. I'll stand here. <laughs> I reiterate my question. How do we get to said skyship? <laughs> There's likely a dock. Right. Okay. Um, Martin, can you remind us what time of year we are in? You are in summer. I think, the, I think it's... I, actually, I think it's... Uh, no, still in uh, spring. Yes. Uh, end of spring. Say, I, I think at the end of the last session, we still had one month before we had to get you into your throne. Right. Okay. So this is the this is our our ride to yeah, get us in position that. so that we can get there on time. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's precisely it. I am destined by the god of death that I have to go take my throne in the Isle of Dread to become the Empress of the Waves, and or sure. some nonsense like that. But you know how it goes. Or die trying. Like on missions. The problem is, if she doesn't do it in time, she messes up the timeline. I mess up the timeline and I cause a paradox and then I will no longer exist. 
She'd get, yes, she gets worse than bad. Yes, and she started down the uh, path of a uh, time walker. So now everything she states has a chance of being prophecy. Right. So if she, speculate, if she speculate, speculates about the future, she's just created a prophecy and has to so then make I, it happen. Exactly. So I can't say, um, you know, I think in a year you'll have purple hair. You're going to have to have purple hair, and I'm going to have to make sure that happens one way or another. You might as well just dye purple on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, just don't ask her about how she thinks tomorrow's going to go. Don't. So, and sure as hell don't ask what the weather's going to be. Like. Yeah. Don't ask so, about the weather. Lonnie is very much learning how to choose her words carefully, whereas if you ask our party companion, Drazzle, um... He often gives one word and confusing answers because he has a lot more experience with this whole time stuff. And now Lonnie has a lot more respect and understanding as to why he doesn't say a lot. I was yes. going to say, has so, been interesting? Uh, you see sitting at the bar uh, one of the army um, healers. Rarely said much, but he sits, uh, he stands at about eight foot tall. Uh, he looks like he's wearing a cloak, but that's his wings. Uh, he is one of the first dragonborn to be reported walking around the world. Uh, he's one of the oldest at about 12 to 15 years of age. No one really knows exactly how 12. old he is. Yeah. Because <laughs> officially 12. Yeah, no. Um, we have. But um, <laughs> I, I, uh, officially it should be 14 because he was born a yeah. few years before the uh, setting started. Yeah. How are we, how are we siblings then? Uh, your, your siblings with um, uh, people who were born more than um, 5,000 years ago. A okay. set of dragging eggs don't Cal all have to be born at Cal once. Calprix is, 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 is going to go get an ice cream from, from the guy behind the counter and share it with Eve and hope her headache goes away. Does Cub sell ice creams? <laughs> yeah. um, yes. um, okay, so every night's Rivet Inn has yeah. a little counter that belongs to Calprix's coffee emporium. Right. Run by notes pastries and things that Calcrix likes, which includes ice creams, <laughs> lollies. Uh, and candy, they have this franchising option. Cookies. All you have to do is sign away something that you know. is about <laughs> a, a thousand pages in length. They just say, go to the back and sign that. That's all you need to know about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because People start reading it, they get annoyed. <laughs> well, well but they are gnomes. They are the best lawyers in the world. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's right. So if you want to sign that, have your own gnome. You yeah. take a twelve-year-old and you ask them what they want in their very own coffee shop, and that's what's in the so coffee ice, area. ice cream and fairy floss. Yes, yes. <laughs> coffee ice cream. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure the gnomes will say made from real fairies. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> or at least they're too floss. <laughs> There's a dark side of that that Calcrix can fully appreciate. So, uh, Dr- given, given your given your <laughs> connections to the dark fae, um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually one hundred percent accurate. No, she's she's not. Yep, she's 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 just gonna eat her ice cream, wait for her headache to go away. And, and what flavour ice cream does she eat? But it eats in bulk uh, and supply. She's having strawberry and coffee. Stra- that's wrong. That is so wrong. <laughs> they are the first two random flavours that came into my head. Mm-hmm. And uh, Drazzle is known amongst the troops as someone who doesn't care uh, what station you are, he'll treat you all the same. Very much with indifference and heal you. No. He has no bit of man whatsoever. But he's good at what he does. And he'll give you a big hug. His form of healing involves hugs. Right. And when he started out, he was one of the shortest people in the group. Mm-hmm. And he's grown quite a lot over the time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Including and we've seen him on diff- different occasions in the same week at three different heights, sometimes without wings. Right. <laughs> and he, his normal way of helping is to write down what's happening. So, can, can we get, get some help, help over here? He'll write down, can we get some help over here? To, to be fair, he has changed time for us hmm. and let us know that he's actually done it once or twice to save us from most certain death and then told us not to mess it up this time. Yes. So, you know, he, there, there's occasions. I Rare. Have... We don't know which ones they're going to be. 
Yes, I have been informed going into a certain circumstance um, that this was the twelfth try and he really couldn't do it anymore. So that that's so where where that's where you should Lani, go do something else. Lani is like now I can kind of appreciate what he says when and I can't why? accidentally make a prophecy about the future because I may have to try and use magic twelve to a hundred times to make sure it comes about so the world doesn't end. Mm -hmm. Or, or even worse, you're erased from the world because uh, your prophecy wasn't valid. Mm. Right. Yep. But on, on happier, merrier, lighter subjects, I think it's time to go to the sky shield. Okay, so you do hear some um, shouts outside uh, as dwarves are alarmed uh, a little bit, but uh, well, there are right. yeah. uh, some people... Uh, Very much. Uh, calming them down. Mm -hmm. Apparently some of uh, Redwin's other agents uh, uh, let the dwarves know not to freak out too much. Mm -hmm. As you so see... Yeah. <laughs> so if you're an employee of Redwin, you're used to weird stuff. Lots of weird stuff. Uh, the, the fact, fact that, that most of the uh, populace don't know about Redwin's um, teleportation network or that he is an information broker. Right. Uh, and uh, it, it's not normally uh, money he sells his stuff for. It's normally to uh, get stuff done. Mm. Yeah. And so he was, uh, in the end, put in charge in direct of Darakin's intelligence organizations. They are all now feeding information. Mm. And so you've been hearing about wars from all over the world, not just um, Darakin. Because the nations of Hyatus and Alphatia are fighting over a common continent between them called the Isle of Dawn. Yeah. And uh, on that island, the fighting is the fiercest. Right. And the sky ship that's here is one of the few that did not get destroyed when uh, someone burnt the Alphatian Armada to the um, ground. Which we, again, may or may not have helped. We we'll be involved in didn't help. But we we just, got. We gave them the bomb. We and supplied. We, we and supplied then, the person who applied it the weapon they used. Yeah. But we didn't know what they're doing or why. It was called the Orb of Destruction. How did we not know what was going to we, happen? No. Well, we knew uh, it was going to blow up, just not where, when, and to who. No, that's true. It was uh, a mile radius um, firestorm. Basically, it was a nuke. Essentially. The hallway hand grenade of Antioch. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not sure about count to three. Yeah. Not, not count to two. Well, in this case, random time. And if that hadn't have happened, the timeline said that this entire region you came from would have been uh, eradicated. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I said. It's the thing to remember is most of the time, our actions are avoiding Armageddon tomorrow. We'll deal with next week, next week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds similar to me. As long as there's a tomorrow, there's hope. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that would be that's yes, a long philosophy. A new a new going off in the city of a god of fire, he's going to splash it everywhere. Mm. So uh going outside you do see uh a mastered um sky ship uh, uh, not far from the ground. Uh it actually can fit amongst the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, on a Dwarven Street because the Dwarven Streets are perfectly straight. They do not have even the slight variation. Um, and this thing isn't very large. And this thing is uh, uh, wide enough that it can have its wings fully extended either side to actually fit down the street. How far from said ground is said sky ship? Uh, it gets itself about uh, 20 feet from the ground. Hmm. Uh, because it does have it does have a keel and um, sails at various points yeah. to um, help guide it. Uh, one thing Lowell does uh, pick up almost immediately is uh, there are Nithian scroll work in the um, boat uh, itself. It's basically like a Which, flying boat. Yeah. So that's a picture of what it, it looks like old. on the top. And those wings are guided. Yeah, that'll, that'll go on at, what, 
25 foot wide street. It will. Yeah. Twenty five or thirty foot wide. And um, it is um uh not of a design you're used to. It has some uh gnomish uh mechanical aspects done to it. It's a gnomish ship, of course. I know it, it doesn't look like a gnomish ship. No, this is, this oh, gnomish one. Yeah. So it, it, it looks like uh, something designed with magic and then enhanced with um mechanics. Interesting. And the design has not been. Uh, there are no plans for this design of ship. Right. So it's a one-off. Uh, it. You don't think it's a one-off? You no, think I it's think is uh, the remains of what I the Nithians really used to use? Yeah. It's just really, really old. So it has. It has survived for far longer than most ships. Mm. Yeah. And like. Uh, probably been not being used for two thousand years. And like most ships where they are used uh, over time, they do get enhanced um, and the magic itself gets stronger. Millennium Falcon style. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you have heard the rumors that it is amongst the fastest sky ships known. Cool. But not anyone could There's fly. There's a large city bear like Greta City in the hill. Uh, there, <laughs> there, there, is, there, is, there, is. there is actually. Yeah, got yes. the okay, put it this way. Put it this way. There is now. He did the castle run in one parsec. Yes. Yeah. That being a measure of distance, not a measure of time, but never mind about that, yes. Someone did make the point that it's a twisty route. If you could do it straighter, it is shorter. It's shorter. But, yeah. Thank you, good pilot. Okay. Uh, and you can see a uh, rope ladder being dropped off the side. Mm. Calfrix offers to lift you up into her saddle and mm. take nah, you up I'll climb it. And so basically, Father Pat just yeah. hauls himself up the ladder through <laughs> the strength of his arms. Uh, <laughs> you can use the one foot you've got. Yeah. Got one foot, that's more than enough. Yeah. Yes, that's right. right. Especially yeah. since it's a ladder, not a rope. Yeah. Uh, as you reach near the top, you see a uh, bear's claw come down and grab you and pull you up on top. There is a big furry thing. Uh, bear folk. You are. <laughs> first <laughs> no, officer. You haven't there you go. the cockpit yet. Yeah. Well, first officer. He's next to the captain. Well, if no one else wants to lift up, this is just going to do a quick flight up. And your no, no, does Papa Jed actually have a like a, a a wooden leg or anything like that? He does have a pig leg, yes. <laughs> he does have a leg. Yeah, I that. And he he just he says, "I'm right." As the guy as the claw tries to hit him, he climbs on and goes for himself. <laughs> Put some iron studs at the bottom of that much of it for kicking people. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> um, Lonnie would probably give you no mind because sh she. Uh, was a sailor. She was trained in the uh, Arendi Navy, all that stuff. So she's used to people with peg legs. So yep. she probably would give you absolutely no mind at all. Yeah. <laughs> it would expect you to find your own way up. And also, from Jack perspective, he's slightly approved because when you realize you're looking more closely, you realize you've got no metal on it. Hmm. And uh, the sword of his guide is actually a wooden sword. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I feel about that one. <laughs> and the uh, uh, cultural thing for those guys. Bear, Bear Folk introduces herself as mm. Rin Harlock. Mm. Uh, as the uh, second in charge, uh, you can see she has the rank of commander in uh, Alphatia, which is always interesting that. Uh, uh, seeing someone in Al Al Alphatian officer's uniform. Not in Alphatia. <laughs> Not in Alphatia, yes. yes. And she does look uh, quite uh, strong. Even uh, for a bear folk. Even, well, most people don't see bear folk in general. Well, that's fair. Uh, True can see them a lot, but not many other people see them. I was going to say, isn't it weird to see an Alphatian bear folk? Uh, outside of our faith here, yes. They generally, oh, okay. they generally don't travel. Gotcha. And you're introduced to the captain who calls himself Sid Harlock. How do we spell that? C-I-D. Oh, okay. Harlock is in Harlock, the space pirate. So C-I-D, Harlock. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and he is a uh, Alphaitian privateer who has the rank of captain among South Haitian. So he was also an Alphaitian uniform. Mm -hmm. This would be an Alphaitian Slashy. Uh, Most ones may not be there. <laughs> no, no. I was going to say, wait a minute. Where's my little little map with all the drawings of who who hates who? Um, okay, so a felt a is up, oh, okay. So a felt a fa is technically the bad guys here. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. they often are. No, I d I have to keep referring to my picture because there's too many arrows. <laughs> there are a lot of factions involved. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And they haven't even gotten into the full Brother civil war yet. Schools of shadows, circles of hate, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, once you all get on board, you're also introduced to a human who calls uh, himself Rutty Rightway. Rotty. Rutty Rightway. Rutty Rightway. Rutty Rightway. Yep, he's about as tall as a dwarf. Slightly pointy nose. Oh, uh, he, he's got spiky black hair, bushy beard, and a bulbous nose. Yeah. Is he a dwarf though? No, nope. we're at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reasonably sure I'm not. <laughs> uh, though uh, you do see his left eye seems to uh, wander away on its own accord. It's just as just as she does to every other person, Across he the offers them all cookies. <laughs> and you find out he's the ship's gunner. Right. Oh, that's I think I with one eye. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, as long as he doesn't close the wrong eye. <laughs> yeah. uh, to your surprise, you are also introduced to Darrow, who is the one of the mechanics of the ship, mm -hmm. and he's a goblin. Okay. Uh, well, most of you don't uh, deal with goblins, because goblins are considered um, uh, amongst the um, pests of the world. Calfrix? Uh, sees this yeah. goblin and she backs right away. And he has uh, also an Alphatian uniform on. Right. Uh, though he is an in ensign. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one you're introduced to is uh, a gnome by the name of Aston Cartwright, mm -hmm. who is uh, uh, seems to be in, uh, ranked from a different organization from Alphatia. And appears to be the uh, uh, engineering corps, mm -hmm. and they seem to be completely separate to the military. Well, that's fair. But you can see all the arcane sigils on him, and see that uh, there is uh, quite a few um, uh, elements incorporated in that. Oh, I'm not surprised. He'd have to be working with pretty well everything. Including warding off some things. And he uh, has. Uh, uh, he, he looks fairly young, but has curly, <coughs> fiery red hair and a uh, bit of a uh, short attitude where he doesn't really talk to people. He's an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and. You also see a uh, elf on board by the name of Alfred Goldleaf, mm -hmm. uh, who is more of a um, uh, assistant, mm -hmm. but doesn't seem to care about doing much. Mm. And uh, yeah, the, the the ship itself does look. Uh, much different than anything you've seen before and there is a slight hum to the um, vessel that is uh, different to the things you've been on with the i'm presuming things to do with the upgrades the goblins have made that the gnomes have made so but yes that that elf is going to make, make me look sort of small and slight father pat just cast his eye with you it's armament uh, it doesn't have any armaments okay. you recognize. Right. Does not have any armor, as I would see. Not that you can recognize, it just looks like it's wood. Wood, okay. On the other hand, it's probably fast enough, it doesn't need weapons. Yes. But we hope so. Uh, well, 
either that or it's assuming that the people on board count as weaponry. Mm. Quick, get the goblin and throw it. <laughs> Cow will do that. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know you would happily toss well, the... Well, you, you throw a log overboard to see how fast the ship's going. You throw a goblin overboard to see how fast the ship's going. Yeah, she's, she, she's happy to use that. Sorry, you've got to tie a rope to his leg, though. No, no, no rope. Just over. You can't miss your speed. You can't work out how fast you can haul back in again. No, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the thing. If you use rope and count it, it's silence. Yeah, no, she's, she's just happy to watch well, and, yeah. and count as as he, as he falls. Uh, no. Three, two, one, done. <laughs> okay, that so. would be you, wouldn't it? <laughs> so yeah. She she wait till it was high mm -hmm. enough before so she could guarantee that he didn't survive it. So the dragon has a problem with goblins. <laughs> she doesn't say that right now. She just backs away. <laughs> She's obviously got a problem with goblins. <laughs> Dragons don't back away from goblins. They try and eat them. Oh, man, she might try and do that, but not in front of everyone. Yeah. But if it disappears... <laughs> we know who to blame. Yeah. She, she's got to be careful also what she says in front of Eve as well. Because mm. Eve might just take him from this plane of existence and obliterate him. So Sid welcomes you aboard, uh, says... Uh, um, he has made arrangements with Redrin to get you to your destination mm -hmm. and could you please refrain from um, harming any of his crew and his crew won't uh, harm you in return. Excellent. Father Pat just nods. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, Lonnie will just be thinking to herself trying to compare this ship to water vessels and just watching with curiosity how this thing works in the air. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, from everything you know about uh, vehicles, this thing shouldn't work. Sounds about right. Magic. Yeah, but. But, and like, I, I, I know water vehicles, I know land vehicles. Uh, we've been on a, on a water craft that was dwarven before yes. that our court did not make any sense. So, you know what? This one being in the sky not making sense makes sense. <laughs> Well, the last uh, ship we're on was made of stone. You were directed to a uh, cabin to That's rest up in. a concept I'm struggling with. <laughs> well, doors don't do things by halves. Yeah. Well, you can get, yeah, we have stone. You can, you, can, you can get modern ships with concrete hulls. Yes, I know. And they're racing ships. But they're yes. not usually carved from stone. No. Um, Caprix would prefer mm -hmm. to kind of watch from some area where she's out of the way. Um, yep. Above board. Okay. In the crow's nest. <laughs> if they're going to let her in the crow's nest, she will watch from up there. They don't have a crow's nest. No. Nope, then she will. How quick she gets up there, they do now. Mm. <laughs> and it's got a nice little plate in it, like a paint pot. <laughs> Uh, you don't think, the thing is, it's small enough, it doesn't need one. You don't yeah. feel the uh, air uh, moving around you, and you realise the ship has actually started moving. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, just below the sails, uh, they seem to have some sort of uh, field that stops the air rushing through. Nice. Uh, uh, back of the ship. That's right. Because if you look there, we're probably moving fairly fast. <laughs> As uh, you see the uh, skyship almost shoot straight up. Wow. I, yeah. Obviously, this is doing definitely skyship rather than airship impressions. Mm -hmm. mm. You do see a slight trail of blue behind it as it's moving. Magic. I want one. <laughs> I so want one. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, you do hear the um, captain chatting away to whoever's um, standing with him, mm -hmm. uh, saying the uh, maximum speed of he can get it to is 500 um, uh, uh, feet a second. I would, would. I've, got a, I've got a dragon from now. I want your destination. Uh, your destination is normally about a month away. Mm. This is. Uh, 
Uh, he can easily do... Uh, 30,000 feet. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is that right? Right. It's it's roughly, it's about more more of a round. Um, you can do 500 feet. Well... Um, which is closer to about so three seconds. Feet. Sorry? Which is closer to about three seconds. Right. Uh, and... Uh, uh, he says he has a ceiling of 20,000 feet. Height, I presume. Well, for most things, ceiling means how high it can fly. Mm. Um, the 500, 500 feet a second is 340 miles an hour. Mm. Mm. Most normal travel away, this is going to take a week. Mm. Ish. Uh, he, no, about he, two days. He, yeah, he estimates about two days. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it'll be quicker once he gets um, above the um, clouds. Mm. Yes. The only downside is that uh, now that the uh, uh, armadas have been damaged, you might have a few uh, void ships trying to take them as they travel. So we'll have to do artillery impressions. Uh, I have I have magic that can help with that. I can help repair things too. Well, his gunner will be able to uh, pin those things down. Mm -hmm. As they, uh, as he controls the uh, uh, mana railgun that fires uh, silver tipped ballistas. Okay. Or ballista bolts. Yeah. Boom. Fun stuff. Uh, the only thing that has come close to catching them is the Haldanic Knights uh, warbirds because they don't use propulsion. They just go zoom. I know they uh, literally or just. They um, I know they they move themselves through the air by the um, power of the god. Ah. So the the sound of the warbird passing overhead is the sound of the wind shrieking as the god's literally propelling it through the air. Okay. That evokes the weirdest visions. Yes. Yes. God's using drones. Well, I can't decide if the I'm god is running stick. around like an eight-year-old boy with a paper plane. That's how um, he describes it. Yeah. yeah. Because technically, uh, the, the warbirds will be doing it directly. The, yeah. the uh, warbirds themselves would try to sink this thing if they had a chance. Mm -hmm. um, so would the elves, he says. Based on the fact that it's a, a merging of uh, Nithian and Gnomish tech. Yeah. Either no. either of which has been forbidden for many years by the elves. I was going to say, we're oh, all of Nithians because of our adventures mm. in the tombs, but we don't necessarily know a lot about mm. their technology. About the technology, next to nothing. But I'm definitely going to have a look at the runes on this thing. Yeah. Uh, none of them are familiar to you, and they do not translate. which means read magic might get me somewhere. In fact, considering what the runes on this would be for, that would be what I'd need to do. I'm not going to spend my time doing that. Uh, most of the runes are on the underside of the hull. Well, that's the other reason for it. And he says he, uh, the captain does say it creates a cushion of air around the uh, vessel itself, mm. which means that at times they can bridge the distance between uh, the world and the moon. That's more than impressive. Well, it's only occasionally they can do it mm. when the moon's close enough. Makes sense. Though the space cats don't like a lot of people showing up on their doorstep. I had heard something about that, yeah. Well, well I wouldn't either. They Their, their role is to stop... Uh, Probably say intersystem threats from breaching the planet. Mm. Yes. Whereas the Alphatian um, Navy's role was to stop uh, uh, planet travelers from uh, reaching the planet. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, planet fleet was decimated mm -hmm. and they've not been able to do so for about four to five years now. I carefully hold an innocent face. 
<laughs> he says, but it, he was not actually serving at that stage, hmm. having uh, been forcibly retired for uh, conduct unbecoming of an officer. Can't imagine what kind of that conduct would be. Oh, uh, uh, he showed his displeasure pleasure at an order with a swift kick that caused uh, a few screams and tears. Um. A lot of screams and tears. Lots of cheers from everyone else, but it was considered inappropriate. Yes, well, mm. an officer doing that to another officer, even if not a senior officer, is it's time for you to go. Well, it was his senior officer. Oh. And had ordered him to commit a um, massacre, and he said no. Oh, wow. And he went, no, and booted him in the nuts. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's happy to fight when necessary, but he won't um, uh, just kill people because he's been told to. Mm. Oh, why don't we also have soft drinks in the bottom drawer of the fridge? Some water, water. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a cold wants, drink as well. Yeah. Dad, so Dad's what, Dad once did something like that. He sort of got away with it because he was an NCO at the time, mm. so he wasn't actually cashiered. <laughs> On the other hand, he didn't get promoted for 10 years. Yeah. Well, considering um, Harlock has one of the few remaining skyships active in the world, mm. uh, they have convinced him to take a uh, rank Work, working in... retirement. <laughs> a, a rank in the uh, military as yeah, long man. as uh, he got to uh, be his own chain of command. Mm. He will work with them, he will help them, but he will not work for them again. I am so the government, not the hierarchy. Very much so. Yeah. He does uh, introduce you to his uh, daughter, who uh, also uh, uh, runs around doing stuff on the ship. Uh, uh, Rian. Uh, uh, Rin is uh, referred to as our family as well, um, even though she's a bear folk. Right. Uh, basically named herself after his daughter. It's fair. And uh, very few people will say no to uh, Rin because, well, uh, bear folk, when they're angry, can literally rip people in half. And have been known to do so. Yes. Mm. Do they play monster chess, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably. So, so there probably is a version of what we would call Chinese chess using monsters. So yes, he's, he's seen some of those. Um, he, doesn't he doesn't recommend watching them because the uh, side effects can be uh, shared amongst them all. Oh, oops. Some monsters do error effect. Right. So, he says, uh, is there anything you uh, need me to do for you on our travel? At this stage, you can actually see that uh, you're, you're probably only five minutes out of rock home and already you're uh, quite high up. Um, yes. High enough that you can see the uh, Nomi City poking above the cloud of the uh, capital of the dwarves. I don't, I don't mention it quite yet. Um... <laughs> Well, there are no dwarves here, so... Yes. Yes. You mentioned um, having to do some repairs. Oh, yeah, the uh, uh, goblin is quite good at repairing um, things. Quite skilled. Most of the goblins of our fate here are trained to repair. You, you, yeah, you mentioned having to do some. Hmm. Do you still need that? Oh, could, oh, you, no. could, you, could you do a hand? Uh... You have to be careful how you repair things because uh, over time it will repair itself. And if I you like and if you repair it incorrectly, uh, you may find it um, uh, deciding you're not worth staying on the ship. So one needs to know the ship extremely well. Very much so, and be friendly to it. Well, that I'm used to. I, I talk to I talk to what is normally inanimate things all the time. Fortunately, in my case, they talk back. Uh, he believes that uh, a uh, uh, 
some sort of griffin lord was instrumental in the uh, construction of it back when it was first built. I'm not surprised. I'd love to actually see how this thing works. But I'm not sure we've got time. Uh, there are uh, three forms of propulsion. He says the main one is the wind, uh, not that it's always useful. The second one is there is a Nirmish, um engine uh, running through the centre of the ship that mm -hmm. uh, creates propulsion out of the back that will give us forward momentum. And there is also the uh, uh, a ancient crystal that it was uh, designed around that provides um, all the lift and uh, much of the uh, weapon powerments. I would so love to spend a couple of weeks investigating this and researching it, and probably then writing a manual for it if you don't have one. Well, we do but have we do have a few, but uh, uh, this is very much unlike most of the Alpha 18 style of vessels. Yes, uh, you might find new things like this being built in Thothia, but they don't make skyships anymore. Well, Mainly due to expensive. And the Alphatians don't like him doing it. Uh, it's the it's not the Alphatian way, and uh, they more grow the ship than build it. I, s I want to check that out too. <laughs> the, I, I like magic stuff. I, Claw spends a lot of time sounding like a wizard, the way he likes things <laughs> about magic stuff. We had visited them recently and got a demonstration of how their magic works. Uh, their uh, meeting room is uh, elaborately um, carved and uh, they are constantly painting over the carvings and enhancing the magic. And they've been doing so since it founded. Right. It's not just renewing, it's also adding. Continuous enchantment. And sometimes yeah. changing the narrative. I'll definitely have to go there sometime. As a uh, year or so. For them, it is the uh, meaning of um, uh, the structure of the sentence is far more important than the individual words like casting spells in general very much so it's supposed to be an early form of spell casting spell casting is ordered words with intent and some talent behind it yes. um, that's it's the only culture that has not been squished by the elf yes i'm also a diplomat and words don't have to have magic behind them to have power uh, he laughs and says, yes. there are many in Alphatia who believe the same. Well, they have a council of a thousand wizards. And they, yes. Rarely well, agree. Doesn't stop the words having power. It's just you've got a lot of complete competing wills trying to do power on each other. He doesn't recommend meeting the uh, Empress. She is a, a little short these days. I know. I talked about that. <laughs> we did meet her. She was very short. There was good reason for it, and it wasn't actually our fault. Yes. Someone killed her husband and blamed it on the party. Yes, using magic to make it look like it was actually us. So they have memories of killing him. And also not killing him at the same time. Uh, okay. So they're guilty and not guilty at the same time. Well, right. The thing is, well... No, we're not guilty. Yeah, because the, on that one. <laughs> no, we're not guilty because the memories of killing him while looking like us weren't our memories. It's just we have them. Well, you can't tell the difference between them and I your know. real memories, and any magic will refer to both as being correct. So we think he, we kill you. Well, well they, they think they've got all of them. And they're very confused because it was completely out of character for them. Yeah, one so, out of character. Two, we were asleep. They killed, with. they killed the Alphatian general who was uh, saying that they should uh, deal with things peacefully. Yeah, where, I was agreeing with him in public. Whereas uh, once he was killed, um, the uh, goddess of peace declared war. Right. So when I'm saying the gods of good fighting the gods of good, 
they are literally the ones that people go to to fix what's happening are the ones who are causing the war because they're fixing what's happening but they disagree on what's actually happening or they agree but in different ways mm. It's very confusing. And the party found the truth behind the war being the fact that the god of magic and the sun had decreed that uh, two of his gods to stop what they're doing under his domain, and they said no. Right. So he's gone, fuck you. Uh, he went to annihilate them because he believed that was his due, and the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex god said no. And as he was an opposing god of uh, quite a lot of power himself, him just saying no uh, caused a rift between all the gods, and that's what started the war. Right. Because the other way to kill a god is to wipe out his followers. And all the gods of darkness and chaos are laughing their heads off, and none of the good guys are doing anything about them. I need to get some of those good gods and give them a slap around the back of the freaking head. So it's... Capricks will do it. So it's literally the gods of magic fighting the gods of magic. Right. And uh, that that's roughly what the whole war's about. And you hear some of this as uh, looking outside, you see just water below. Mm -hmm. And it only feels like you're about half an hour or an hour out of Rockland by this yeah. stage. Well, at, at half the speed of sound, mm -hmm. it's not going to take very long to get anywhere. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. But for you, the, the world itself is just um, so far below that everything's uh, covered in clouds. You almost see the, the, the curve yeah. of the Earth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see you the can. curve of the Earth. <laughs> it, doesn't take, it doesn't take a lot of altitude to see that. And that the uh, uh, northernmost part of the world is shrouded in darkness. Mm -hmm. That's a perpetual night, no matter where the sun is. Yeah. Well, plus, of course, at the moment, the sun's in weird places. Right. Uh, you can it see came, it came up in the north the other day. You can see where the sun's supposed to be is a, uh, a red, uh, reddish yellow star, uh, and um, somewhere um, following uh, the the actual ship itself is uh, uh, what you'd assumed was the sun by the amount of light it's putting out, until you realise that it is a. Uh, giant uh, pterodactyle style bird. Which it's could actually also be. And is there uh, four elephants floating on a turtle? <laughs> standing on a turtle's back somewhere? In? No, no, that's all the thing. We're not the Hollow World thing. Goodness. <laughs> but uh, they, they refer to that as one of the primal titans. Mm. Yeah. Right. The titan of the sun. Yeah. And it is the sun, at least at the moment. And when it woke up, it basically uh, sucked a lot of the power out of... Uh, the sun hints mm. now being a red throw. Yeah. Mm. Yes, which is going to piss off all the sun gods. Mm. Well, it took a lot of power from the sun gods. Exactly. Because the primordials got it. Mm. They want it back. Mm. Okay. These are things for greater beings than us. <laughs> to worry about. Yeah, yeah except <laughs> we're directly involved in it. Like, Putting the primordials back asleep has been something we've had to do several times so far. And you were warned that you can't enter Galantry now that they've told you some of these things. Because uh, the gods that are protecting it and trying to attack it uh, will literally uh, erase anyone who knows this who crosses the border. Right. Yep. You know sedition. We will remove you from the world. <laughs> Mainly because one will try to use you and one will try to remove you. And yes. uh, when one's trying to use you, the other one will remove you. Yes. doesn't matter which one, they both do the same things. Yes. Hey, buddy. No, look over the other side. Meow. 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 I'm putting it up. Meow. So he's there, on. And uh, his meowing is generally why uh, his name's up on the list of players who show up at games. Mm. <laughs> he plays the gods. Yes. Okay, so... Just as capricious as most of them. Exactly. As this uh, skyship doesn't need mm. to stop for night, mm -hmm. and it can avoid um, the air currents and make its own, 
uh, you find that you will be uh, reaching uh, the Isle of Dawn, uh, sorry, the Isle of Dread, uh, roughly um, uh, about midday the next day. Right. Uh, Sid recommends you guys getting some rest because, uh, to be honest, you're going to need it. Yeah. We're, we're entering the Isle of Dinosaurs. Don't know why it's called the Isle of Dread. It should just be called the Isle of Dinosaurs. Those dinosaurs are dread like. Mm. Well, there are a couple of. And there are no judges here to be found. No. <laughs> I wasn't going to do that one. So the, uh, oh, so the Isle of Dread is a tiny island in comparison to the Isle of Dawn, and the centre of the Isle of Dawn is also full of dinosaurs. Right. It's called No Man's Land because uh, men don't live long in there. They don't need to put in um, uh, traps or uh, mines or anything like that because yeah, the, the whole place will pretty much wipe out armies. Mm. And it's believed that uh, uh, there is a place known as the Tome of Horrors can be found in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And occasionally adventurers try to go there, but no one sees them again. Why would people want this Tome of Horrors? Uh, fame and fortune. Mm. And huge power. It said that, that anyone who can reach his heart can uh, uh, potentially have a chance at Godhood. Oh, okay. And many yeah, people believe they're good enough to do that. Since the gods are fighting, there's a vacancy opening up the front, like he said. It's just question you want to get a god, but all the other gods are trying to wail on you. They're currently fighting through their forces, not each other. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're taking advantage of, so far. of all the, all of the poor followers, who are, are looking them to the wards of for mentorship, mm. guidance, hope, mm. and they're getting seven-year-old children arguing over toys. And one of them is a paladin of the sun god. And last time he communed with the sun god, he got waiting music and figured out that all the other um, devotees of that god were also getting waiting music. Because all of them were trying to contact him at the same time. <laughs> and he's all is important to us, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what That's they got. The yeah. <laughs> he went to yep. say a prayer and he got, please hold. <laughs> Well, Alternatively, talking. if you'd like, we can call you back when you reach the end of the queue. <laughs> the exactly top of the queue. Yeah. <laughs> In a week. I, um, I, I am yeah. not joking. <laughs> that is precisely the message he got. Mm. Yes. I went to see Car and it took me, what was it, most of a night mm. to actually sit through the waiting queue? That was actually pretty fast. Mm. Yeah. That's because he wanted to see me. Mm. He actually wanted to see me now. I still had to wait like eight hours. Hey, Raphael was a bit better. Yeah, that's because he doesn't have many people actually talking to him. It's basically um, me and my family. So I presume when he asked if there was anything he could do for us it meant in terms of comfort, etc. Well, if you have something else in mind, he might see what he can do. Um... Do we, we need to worry about things as mundane as equipment, or we've just got what we need whenever we need it? Well, you do also have... Basic um, equipment is whatever, because right. that's functionally zero cost at our level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, magic there, gear, that's a bit different. There is a lot of magic gear in the setting, right. and many of the characters have excess mm. magic gear, mm. uh, and that's generally what's passed around, because they've been in the story a long time. Right. Yeah, yeah Drazzle has a long list of, I'm carrying this for when someone needs mm. it. Right, okay. And some things better than others. Mm. Um, yeah, so Most of them are low end, as you will be not surprised to hear. Okay, so if I go to characters, I will go find a character. And my stuff's. That one's not working properly, so. Uh, I want this one. Okay, it's a bad choice. <laughs> Okay, so they have 306 items floating around amongst them um, <laughs> uh, listed in there, and they each have IDs associated but with But that's amongst all the characters in this storyline. Right. Mm. Including NPCs. Mm. Okay. Um, I've got about 30, like 20 of those, something like that. I've got a lot. So, uh, about that's, 30 items. you have yeah. nine, uh, you have, yeah, 20 listed there. Yep. Um, and a few other things will be added in there later. I have a, 
bunch of other stuff mm. because I've got things added to those. Plus, I've got to work out with the dragon pauldron what that actually does look like. Because um, if it's supposed to look like what I'm going to become, mm. we'd need to work what that work out what that is. Because that's what also that's you so, so you need so. to somehow we I, we need to get Father Pat into this system as a character. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, if you have a look at the stuff that mm. uh, Drazzle's carrying, mm. we can see what's available as, as yeah, free to have. Generally, what Drazzle has generally yeah. is available. Yeah. yeah. Because he doesn't use a lot of gear himself. He's got a suit. And he's happy to give it to you if you ask for it. Yeah. But if, if, if Drassel yeah, doesn't have it... he has 58 habit, different items. Yeah. See most, if you can steal it off Dimitri. Yeah. Mo most of the... Most of that is just stuff he's carrying for people. Jeremy for, wants to your black razor? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Calcrix didn't want an item. She wanted um, a quiet private space to yeah. say her prayers. Yeah, like, there's a great axe, there's a hand axe, uh, scale armor. Uh, a few of those things are associated with him you. just so that they weren't um, lost. Oh yeah, I know, they're, they're stuff he's carrying. That's what I'm saying, those are things that he's not using so you could. Right. Though some of them are also his specific items. Yeah. Yeah, you, that, yeah some of them are generally. But, yeah, but there, he's got at least three suits of armor that he's not wearing right now. So what's world plate? World plate is, and the world dagger aren't currently available. Right. But okay. those items um, uh, stop magic. Mm. They're not hand yeah, magic. They're not ones you actually want to use stop magic. most of the time. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> they're for special bosses. Yeah. They found them in the hollow world. Right. And uh, if you throw a dagger at someone, um, magic defenses have no effect against it. Right. Right. Well, it, it, it actually destroys every magic it touches. Oh, Black no, Razor is what I think Black Razor touch. is. Black Razor is an artifact. Yes. He's got another Moonblade? There is another Moonblade yeah. there, yes. Yeah, Clavec. Take a few moons out there. What does a Bay of Wales <laughs> breastplate do? Let you swim? Uh, yeah. No, that is no? his clan. Right. Oh, uh, yep. sorry. Yes, that's his. That is his clan. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's actually his armor. But also, if you have mm. need of something, and one of the other players slash characters um, has it, you can ask them, and if yeah. if they they feel they can do without it, they they will give it to you. Um, yeah. We, we do lend or give things to other people, yeah. even into sessions. So, like on Wednesday or Friday, if they need something. And Martin's like, well, they need this or they need that. Then the character can choose if they want to lend or give it to yeah. the, the person who needs there's, it. Yeah, there's also um, most of us have at least a couple of items that we're carrying that we don't presently use. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Calvary chooses everything she's got. I said some of them. So there are many Owen boots available to people. Yes. Yeah, that's true. You'd only gauntlets. need one. So ask for a discount. No, they are, are gauntlets of ochre power that uh, will oh. um, assist some people. Good old gauntlets of ochre power. I haven't heard mm. of them for a while. But they're all named for uh, their purpose, not for uh, which item they're referencing. Mm. So very few of them will be a base item from the book. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, every item has a story. Mm -hmm. Yes, the things can be modified as Does well. Does she get to pray somewhere? She can. Um, right. So yes, uh, you find a nice little bit in the corner to pray. Uh, well, she asked if there was a private like room mm. she could crow's borrow nest. for, <laughs> for <laughs> well, half an hour. They don't hour. actually have a crow's nest <laughs> because if they did, it would be outside the area of protection, <laughs> and someone would suffocate. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, or, or get ripped off the ship. <laughs> well, she has spells to help her with that, so, you know. Um, she's also an air elemental dragon, being white. Um, but uh, she, she'd prefer not out in the middle of the open. She needs somewhere to set up a little shrine to all the various gods. She's not on purpose, unintentionally acquired. Following. 
that all require their dues. Okay, so you the main place you have to set up is the bunk quarters that Harlock has set aside for you all. Well, that's why she was mm -hmm. asking, is there just like somewhere private ship? Uh, it, it's not a big ship, he says. Um, okay. uh, he has a uh, lower deck section that is currently um, uh, full of uh, other things. Bathroom, She'll make please. do with a bathroom. Other side of this wall, there is a I'd door in the middle of the corridor. Light on in there. Yeah. Um, she, as I said, she doesn't need it for for long, but mm -hmm. um, she kind of doesn't want everyone to hear. Well, he he can kick everyone else out of there while you use it. Mm. Um, I don't know how they'll feel about that. Well, he just asks her in to uh, make sure everyone else is out of there. And she'll try and make it short then. Uh, and Rin's quite happy to just pick someone up and drag them by their heels out. Um, and she, she'll, she'll do it as an abbreviated version as she thinks she can get away with without displeasing the Queen of Darkness or um, Io or um, the Great One mm. or the list goes on. Okay, so uh, you, you have no problem setting up and... Uh, you you feel your uh, connections quite strong to most of the gods at this height and literally the the higher you are the closer you are to your god well there's less other people around to distract them oh I see all right. It's like if it's like equivalent of shouting amongst a group of people shouting or, or going, going to a hilltop, hilltop away from, from people, people shouting and shouting, shouting from there um, uh, so uh, yes she she will perform her a normal ritual, um, coffee for certain gods, tea for the other ones, um, and then a little bit of. Uh, she, usually, she has some something special that she parts with, like a bit of special chocolate or something like that. That, that uh, an offering, um, piece of fresh fruit uh, that she's found, something like that, and then um, she'll basically. Uh, She's, she's got herself a little carving of, it's not her best gem craft, of a little dinosaur. And um, she'll, she'll do her last one to Carl and to say, um, as we're going back to the Isle of Dread, please, please uh, bless us with making wiser decisions. Um, and please... Um, I will tr I will try to uh, encourage my my uh, uh, friends not to kill things as soon as they see them and they come running and, and big dinosaurs come running towards them um, but please be patient with them and perhaps maybe teach them the lesson of of being more patient when encountering your beings on your wonderful island. You do feel peace at your uh, requests. Of course, she's keeping in mind the mass killing of all of one type of his dinosaurs uh, and then he got on the previous the visit. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he might remember that as soon as they set, <laughs> set wing back into his space. Mm. Uh, so she's, she, yeah, so she's made this little dragon gem thing mm -hmm. especially as as apology for killing his beasties earlier and promise that she won't kill any more beasties mm -hmm. she can't guarantee what her party members will do mm -hmm. um but she will respect his lands and and hope that he accepts that okay so uh sid uh, uh finds whoever's going to represent the mm -hmm. crew for you Oh, okay. Uh, this, is, this is good, right? It is always good. Depending on who uh, steps up. Is uh, Drachnamir or Lowell going to take the... I was going to say, presumably Lowell would be the one that would be assumed to be the leader based upon the interaction that has occurred so far. Yeah. being the sort of face. Uh, I was going to say, Father Pat, 
you know, he's, 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 uh... Yeah, but he doesn't have the practice cheesy. with these people. Cheesy. Well, no, he is, well, he is it, charismatic. It, it, it's, more, it's more the fact that Paul has been the one that's been interacting and talking yeah. to Sid the most so far. As I said, I yes. was just cheesing. Um, yeah. Um... Well, that's very much in the watch and learn mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So. So you. So is that Lowell going to go speak with the captain as a group's representative? Yes, I'll check with the others to see if they've got any points they want to make before I go in there. But yes. Does anyone have any points they wish to make? In, in what sense? So the captain has actually asked for a meeting with the team leader, or...? Yes, he has. Or, or did the captain just ask to meet with Pilar? Well, he, he asked to meet with the group leader. Mm. Right. I'm okay with well representing us in, in the sense. Mm. I don't necessarily have anything... I'm busy praying to Carl that he won't kill us. I think Father Pet will come along. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure Lonnie Lonnie will come will come along if that seems to be allowed. But yeah, mainly yeah. having making sure Luel's out front. Yeah, moral support's good. Okay, so you find yourself brought into the captain's cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see lots of uh, maps uh, in a wall in his cabin, uh, all labelled with um, uh, different things in Alphatian. And he Which had, we cannot read. Uh, okay. Some can read. Yeah, so there are five common languages, uh, one of them being Thyatan, another one being Alphatian, then you have Primordial, then you have Shadowlands, and then you have uh, Undersea. So I said the guys can't read them, that's fine. Yeah. Don't, Und Und Undersea, Undersea I don't have, but yeah, I know a lot of languages. And so Lonnie that, knows a lot of languages for not having uh, magic to help her with it. Oh, I know a lot of languages and I've got magic to help. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, on the table, he has a uh, sprawled out map of the Thanigoth Archipelago. Mm -hmm. And looking at <clears throat> it, it's not a flat map. It uh, looks mm -hmm. uh, to be a three dimensional representation of the region. As <laughs> an illusion or as physical map? You can't quite easily tell. Mm. I look at it with my magic eye. But he happily unrolled it. Yeah. But uh, it was already um, open on the table, but it does look as if it rolls up. E I'm impressed. Mm. Okay, oh, I've got a map. What that's doing. I've, <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a map that does something like that. Mine's ridiculously magical, and this doesn't appear to be that magical, and it's still impressive. Uh, looking at it, it does radiate magic, mm. and it uh, looks to be uh, something in the uh, very rare range. Okay. Uh, yeah, and like say, just. And Airship wants a map like yours, but including elevation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mine, mine will do elevation. you just got to know how to tweak it. Plus, you've got to be attuned to it, and there's other things you need as well. Mm. And you can see what appears to be uh, a dot moving along the um, uh, map heading to what looks, looks like it's heading southerly. Right, I'm presuming that one's us. says, yep, that would be us. Uh, yep. if, if we can uh, spot anything using the ship's instruments, they will also appear on here as well. Nice. So this is part of basically attuned to the ship. We have a lot of um, maps attuned to the ship. Mm. Yep, not surprised. Rather useless to be stolen. Yes. And generally makes the ship angry with them. Mm. I can see that. How freaks would have visions of the ship running around chasing said person it's angry with like a dog? Um, yeah, given one of the people who's worked on this thing, the ship probably acts like a griffin and reacts mm. like a griffin. Well, he says it has a personality like a griffin lord. That's what I was thinking. Or like a magpie. <laughs> Very similar, really, but with, with a sharper beak. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he, memory. Uh, he, he lays the map out and you do see uh, most of the island except the centre of the island is blank. Mm, that makes sense. Yes. 
it's not something you'd want to go and actually map. Oh, it says uh, mapping doesn't work there. No. Well, that's another thing too. A lot of things We've don't work there at the We've been to the centre of the island. Mm. Yes. But you do see that there's like uh, 10 other uh, islands in the chain. Mm -hmm. uh, none of them have that problem. Yeah. 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 But some of them have changed in shape recently. Then I'm not entirely surprised that at least one of them is, is, is its own primal from memory. Well, each of them was uh, the resting place of one of the primals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Though their spirit was attached to the Isle of Dread. Mm. Yeah. But they're sort of just off over there having a nap. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, do you have any uh, place you particularly wish to be dropped off? Do we remember where it's where we're going to be closest to Lani's throne? That's the center of the island. Well, the ideal would be it the was land of nearest the center. Yeah, that's the problem. It's how how best to get to the center from what we know of the island. Um, um, how close are we to the island at the moment? Can we actually see the surface, uh, even if the map doesn't show anything? Well, you can see that uh, the northern side of the island is mostly mountains with a um, swamp. Yeah. Uh, the eastern side is mostly mountains with a bit of a jungle. Yeah. Um, though it does note down a uh, spider um, uh, symbology in that section of the uh, island. Yeah. The uh, uh, western side of it is all mountains uh, in the north and jungles to the south and does have symbology of um, uh, the dead. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. And in the southernmost area, there is uh, a great wall uh, crossing um, a, a small island bridge to a uh, subsection of the island which has villages on it. Right. Mm. Uh, remember, do not fly over the centre of the island. Oh, God, no. no. Yeah, yeah, we were told not to do no. that. But if we fly uh, over, if we fly off, we just go the same way we came last time. There, there was a yeah, certain way to head to the, 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 the village. village. This is yeah. why I was going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. First up, if we fly over the, near the edge of the island, and use a telescope, can we get more info? He says uh, uh, the inner island is shrouded in clouds and fog. Okay, fair enough. All right. So from the last time we were here and from what we learned, as well as our own travels, yep, you had a question? Calbricks has a map. She drew in her journal of how we went last time. Cool. That's one of the things I was checking for. Um, given what we know, plus the map that Calbricks has made, mm -hmm. Um, and any annotations we've added to that. Uh, where is the best place to go to for what we need to do? Okay. Quickest trip. Uh, quickest okay. trip would be to be dropped off on the northern side of the lake, but yep. uh, considering there's no good spot to be dropped, um, and Sid can't wait around for you. No. Uh, the southern um, villages would be the safest place to be dropped off because he could literally um, park there for mm. a week without any danger. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So shortest and best are not the same thing. Mm. We're going to go for best. Uh, mm. When you're talking southern villages, mm -hmm. are you talking the villages on the south coast, with, like the Etruvian villages? Are we talking the villages of uh, Lani personnel inside the centre lake. I'm talking about villages of the Etruvian clans. Okay, how do that? Yeah, that, 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 that <laughs> yeah. Because he doesn't know he doesn't know about the other villages. Yeah, yeah he, no, he that, would have right. no knowledge. Thinking, that involves flying over the centre, which would be bad. Well, he's already yeah, said he's not going to touch them with a barge pole. Yeah, this this would yeah. be the, so, the turtle people and then the tiger Rakasta, mm. is it? Uh, he does note down that the centre of the island is warped with um, planner magic. Yes. And uh, even, even the um, uh, void ships avoid that space. Mm. Uh, not surprised. Uh, is he able to um, fly over and drop us off above the target? Uh, it says... Um, he, 
He probably yeah. could get that close, but he can't guarantee um, uh, a safe landing, let alone uh, getting his vessel back out because the creatures uh, have been known to take down military ships uh, ten times the size of his. Uh, uh, <laughs> even moving at speed, they can bring them down. Yeah. That's why I said uh, if they're going too fast, you won't survive the landing. Yeah, it's several, several amounts of not safe. So the safest option is it's to the, just the start at the Etrugan villages. Yep. That, that's his preference. He could try dropping you off earlier, but he can't guarantee you'll make the landing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, again, Calcrix is like, technically, she could, she could change her size. She can come huge and everyone could ride on her back. But, yes, but somewhere between the sky and the ground, uh, you the, you may miss. The, the yes. ship does need to land and wait for us somewhere safe. So. And there's no reason that we can't go and uh, visit the uh, our friends, the Achurigans, on the southern village again anyway. And he says he has uh, some uh, friends there, um, cat folk. Yeah, cool. yeah, that makes sense. That has uses. Well, we make friends there when we we're there last time, too. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh... Uh, and uh, poor old could probably also describe the fact that uh, some of Tig's colleagues have visited the cat folk up on the moon. Mm. Yes. So he would have heard from Dimitri in long and great detail. <laughs> yes, yes, you did do that last session. Well, Sid, Sid was there with them, so he knows. Mm. Mm. He's the one who flew them there. Mm. Yep. So yes. uh, the uh, uh, skyship, uh, you still don't feel the movement of it. I'm not surprised. Uh, this thing's really nice. And uh, when you start to see the island, it's probably the uh, fastest you've come seeing such a horrific place. Is it, It's one of the legendary places where adventurers disappear. Yes. Well, there's the fact that we're Okay, the characters don't know this, but we're presently travelling faster than you can fall. Mm. Mm. Well, I think this is Calfrix's third visit yeah. to the island. It is. By the way. Mm. Yeah. I, I mm. guess it's she's a dragon, so she's not too far different from the dinosaurs themselves. Well, you're large and scaled and scary. Yeah, not as large as many of them. But larger than some. Larger than some. And uh, more more intelligent than most. More scary than anything else. Though you do feel sorry for the T-Rex um, god who was uh, the only intelligent life around at the time. I do. Yes, Car being the only intelligent being for stupid amounts of time. He really refers to Io existing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going there. <laughs> okay, so ain't touching that. White right dragons oh. don't hold grudges, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's Carl was like the only intelligent being until they were mammals. Grandfather. In its own. In his own. <laughs> Unwillingly. Yeah. He's a naturally intelligent T Rex who became an immortal basically by dint of living forever. Um, and was the only intelligent being until they were, mam they were mammals to talk to. Not the and taught many of them how to um, do magic. And According speak. to some of the stories, he was. Yes. Yes. But he was the only intelligent being for a long, long time. But he was the only intelligent mortal for a very long time. Yes. yes. Well, yeah, he was a mortal for a hell of a long time before he, he was an immortal. He, he had the choice of the company of someone that Calcrix thinks is is worthy company um, well io was a was a god so most people don't refer to having conversations with god on a regular basis so she she's, she's, keep, she's keeping all of this to herself right now though <laughs> okay so as it comes in towards the village uh you see the uh, uh speed uh almost um slowing down uh, so fast it's jarring stop there yeah. Uh, as mm. it's uh, coming into uh, what looks like the um, harbour next to the um, uh, a great inlet. Uh, 
inlet mm -hmm. is uh, probably about uh, a, a seven or eight mile um, cove. Yeah. And you see um, Sid uh, guide the ship to uh, just uh, slightly inland from the wharf and just park it above the um, area of the village there. Yeah. You can see a great wall um, to the north of the village dividing it from the rest of the island. Mm. Uh, most of the um, island itself looks to be made out of uh, wooden straw mm. uh, of, the, um, of their encampments, but the uh, wall itself appears to be uh, almost solid stone. Mm -hmm. So there's no walls around, we'll be fine. Yeah, once upon a time there were three little piggies. The first little piggy from his house made a straw. <laughs> the fourth one made it out of one piece of solid stone because he was facing wizards. And the wall is um, that the, the ship itself could easily land on the wall and has space either side of it. Yeah. It, it's one of the biggest, thickest walls you've ever seen. I'm, I'm thinking of a wall like the Great Wall type deal. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it's it's used to keep really big things out. Well, it's a fifty-foot high wall that is fifty feet across, so it's a big square chunk yeah, uh, so that's just crossing um, over um, six miles of mm -hmm. island. Yeah, yeah. Almost as if the wall came later. Yeah, that that yeah. makes the that makes the Great Wall of China look like a look like a piker. Mm -hmm. Of course, that had a different task. Yeah. This one yeah. is designed to keep the uh, uh, animals of extreme size out of the villages. Yes. yes. Or at least make with the foot line of a step over the village. <laughs> um, okay, the really, really, really big ones aren't normally around. There's no walls will stop that. Uh, the Great Wall of China was designed against ponies. Yes. Mm. Yeah. In the very center of the uh, uh, city is a pyramid, and surrounding it, uh, um, you can see the symbology of a tiger clan, a sea turtle clan, an elk clan, and a hawk clan, which reminds you of the Etruagan, uh, uh, that uh, bordering Durrican. Durrican has a sort of peace treaty with them, yeah. uh, mainly because they hired one of their great fighters as a general. Right. Mm. At least that's what they tell everyone. Chief of clans. Yes, the chief of chiefs. Yes. So yes, uh, upon arrival, you are greeted by uh, a bunch of humanoid um, tortles. Mm-hmm. Uh, as they, they seem, seem to have, have quite a large community, community here. It's all also fun to play. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, this, this is, is the setting that they originated in. Yes. And you see... Dr. Arbathabu. Every sentence you start with, Arbathabu. Oh, dear. But knowing that turtles speak very slowly, would be more on the lines of, ah, but, but, uh, you. Yeah. Much better than trying to speak to trees. Yeah, but not too different. Fast compared to trees. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but both slow compared to everybody else. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And you see a bunch of Rakasta um, coming up um, behind them. Cool. Bunch of what? Rakasta. So uh, humanoid cats. So right. the tabaxi were based on them, right? But the tabaxi, from their opinion, are the degenerate versions of their race that they want to eradicate. Okay. Yeah. Why do you want from to eradicate? A from a designer purpose, from a designer reason, tabaxi are based on wild cats, but lions and all the rest. Of their well, stuff. they want to, but they Rocastra don't. Castro based on domestic cats. Domestic cats. So they're the civilized ones who want to take out the savages. Mm -hmm. Why, if you're, if you're civilised, truly civilised, you don't feel the need, let alone think, that you have to wipe out the less intelligent white well, people. Tell, mm -hmm. tell that to British colonialists. Yes, I will. <laughs> Get a time machine. Go for it. I well, the, the, the Tabaxi give them a bad name, and most people think of <laughs> the Rakasta as uh, a sort of simplistic. Tabaxi. 
Yeah. And find out the hard way that they're not. Mm. Uh, they are based more around um, the great cats than they are the domestic cat. They're more the yeah. young one from the um, Basque Theros top. Mm. Mm. That's roughly where the uh, those uh, uh, ideas came from. Mm. Um, yeah. because yeah. the uh, Rakasta came from originally the setting as well. Yeah. Mm. Tabaxi existed around the same time, but again, they were... They're not origin yeah. Mistara, whereas Rakasta are. Mm. Yeah. Not to be mi for, uh, mixed with Rakasta, uh, the Rak Rakshasa. Rakshasa. No, the Rakshasa are very different. Because they're actually a spirit. No, uh, they're a demon. Yeah, demon, yeah. yeah. Indian demon. Yeah. And most of them are cat-like as well. Yeah, so. well, they're based on explicitly on tigers. Uh, mm. Oh, no, they can be any cat. Uh, they, in, there, there are in some, D &D some of the stories of D&D have them with many cats. Mm. Yes, but yes. the original stories, they're all yeah. tigers, because that's mm. the Indian magic animal. Okay, so yes, uh, the, these uh, uh, great cats have uh, metallic claws. Things that Father would... Pat probably gets a bit of a surprise when... As the portal stuff come up as the initial greeters, <laughs> yeah. and uh, an apparent half dragon comes out from the ship and greets the portals. Yes, he no longer looks like General Dragnama mm -hmm. anymore. No, he now looks like half dragon. What does a half dragon look like? Tail and human head. Wing, oh, uh, uh, dragon snout. <laughs> How do you look? Probably yeah. Yeah. To what like does a half a dragon look like? <laughs> which bit's half and which bit's yeah. dragon? Well, <laughs> go or is it on his left side? Like, <laughs> like there are specific <laughs> imagery for it. Yeah. I would think if you were making a, a dragon ball, had some wings and a tail. <laughs> that's what we're looking at. Okay. Half so, dragon, five yeah. inch sub race. You said like a dragon ball, did you? Yeah, with wings and a tail. Most dragons so, don't have tails or wings. So the, no, the yeah. half dragons are out, out, out of the. Yeah. Um, that's a five-inch. Yeah, yeah, the, the, um, the, yeah the, the half dragon is a. Um, I know. Well, there's a couple of different versions of it. That's the five one. You can find the base half dragon in the monster manual yeah. but, as a template. Yeah, yeah, but the dragonborn is probably a better one because it's a bit less extreme. Yeah. And it's up to Jeremy how extreme he looks. Yeah, mm. but it's yeah. going to be distinctly draconic. Mm. Mm. Let's just know which bit was half, which bit was dragon. That's all. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. The outer bit is dragon. <laughs> the inner bit is not. The inner bit is human. Because <laughs> yeah. there's one. Yes. <laughs> that that might be the extent to which he's a half dragon. His inner bits yeah. are not dragon, and his outer bits are. Although his stats have changed, or his abilities have changed. Is and a cloaca and. <laughs> no. And you uh, see no, them because dragon, <laughs> dragonborn is still dragonborn is still mammals. Ah, uh, yeah, but he's half dragon. So this is the they question. Are, Yes, but if he's based on a dragonborn, they're, they're mammals. And the dragonborns, are, I think they've they're, got boobs. They're mammals. I thought they had laid eggs too. Not, um, that, I've, yeah, not that I've ever read. Technically, because dra Drazzle was read. born from an egg. Drazzle was born from an egg, but that he's a different type of half dragon. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Well, now, now we can hear to his room. Uh, I'm like, into the depths of things we don't need to get into. So, in this setting, uh, yeah. all the dragonborn that you've uh, met are uh, um, adrogynous, so they don't actually have a sex. Mm. And um, they cannot reproduce. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's they're, they're, the. They're functionally the, biological constructs. Mm. Which means uh, anyone playing one ends up being an outcast. Drazzle's not an outcast. He's an incast. He, he's, he's part of our family. <laughs> yes, but anywhere else he goes, he's treated as an outsider, but one they respect a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See if they get away with that while Power Crooks is around. Okay, so yes, uh, you notice that um, the tortles and the um, cat folk, uh, Rakasta, uh, all seem to uh, kneel before... Uh, Drachnama, the half dragon. Mm -hmm. Right. And give him a lot of deference. Uh, 
Well, he's a big That wasn't quite what he was hoping for. He's cheap, cheap. Is this what he wanted? Is it in a financial form? I can't understand. Uh, but okay, he, he's uh, yes, coming forward to greet them and apparently be greeted. Um, you hadn't quite realized you uh, were also chief of chiefs of um, this region as well. But well, it's true. It, it kind of thought about it, but never really actually connected it properly. So, well, it's your first time back since you got the title. Hmm. Uh, I, I thought he had a chance the title beforehand, but. But if the first time back, he would have been, oh, no, because previously he, he, had, he would have been actually already in half and Volk could get out by then, could he? Mm, yes. I like um, the attitude on this one. Uh, mm. Okay. He was definitely half when we came here last time, because he used his breath weapon at one point. He did. To, yes. to melt the, uh, the people that put a steel rod through his leg. <laughs> but at the time, they hadn't um, gotten uh, word from their god that you were uh, um, in charge. I can't have with that. Yeah. Uh, They've been told now. Mm. Yeah. And just think, you now have uh, four more clans you have to manage. Mm. That's right. Thanks, <laughs> buddy, to Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's what delegation's for. <laughs> well, four more clans in this village, plus the clans in the other villages. Calcris is going to go find <laughs> some kids and play with them. She doesn't have yeah. to manage anyone. Um... Uh, so you, uh, you are greeted warmly by the uh, tortles, even though rather slowly. Well, uh, okay. Certainly, is, uh well, he'll accept appropriate deference for, uh, for his position, but he'll also be keen to say, hey, come on, guys. I'm no different from last time. <laughs> Makes it more titled from their point of view. But last time, <laughs> their god hadn't directed them to uh, give you deference. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the... That's yes. Uh, the, the main point being, okay, well, this... How's it going? Been giving changes? Uh, it's been a lot quieter since the um, Primal Titans left. Right. Uh, uh, the buggers are somewhere else. We've got to go and find them. Have they? Have they easy to collect the tar? Uh, much easier. Uh, the uh, rest of the dinosaurs seem to be uh, causing havoc amongst themselves. Uh, they no longer have uh, the spirits of the primals overseeing them. In keeping the balance. And the uh, flying monkeys? Oh, the flying monkeys are still a pain. Never trust a flying monkey. I wouldn't trust Are these flying monkeys head as they, or are they something different again? Oh, uh, are they the flying monkeys from uh, Wizard of Oz? <laughs> oh, no, they don't have wings. Yeah. They are more like flying foxes. Right. And they are called phantoms. Right. So they're they're not head as they from Step Spelljammer. Uh, they're, they're not from Spelljammer, no. Right. Right. So Spelljammer may have something similar in them. They, 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 they have no more gliding monkeys yeah. than they're flying monkeys. Um, <laughs> These are more gliding monkeys. Yeah, yeah. they... The Hattersy, yeah, which are basically the same thing as these guys. Right, okay. Only with more tech. Yeah. They're, they're not quite as primitive. But yeah, the... Um, the Hattersy for Spelljammer. Right. Same guy. Okay, okay sir. sir. The uh, cat folk are uh, more than happy to greet uh, uh, all of you, again, having seen most of you before. Mm -hmm. uh, though they tend to want to talk to Sid far more than you guys. Having uh, 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 giving him updates on uh, stuff happening uh, elsewhere. They, they sort, sort of take, take him, him off to the, the side, side to talk to him about stuff. You did uh, hear from uh, Sid earlier that uh, he part of his job between uh, for the Alphasian uh, is uh, information gathering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so he passes on information to other uh, uh, people that the Alphasians wish to pass on. Yeah, we could tell him about 
what we saw in the island, but a lot of what we saw was a bit weird and is very temporary info right at the moment. Mm. But information about the flying monkey people would be something to give. Well, uh, you have one of the Rakasta is offering to give you a guide uh, through to wherever you need to go. As he says, he's still got clan members in the middle of the island. That is an extremely good and extremely useful offer. What, you mean Bill's still here? I believe Bill's still floating around in there, he says. Hmm. As well as a few others. Uh, uh, so many of the guides <laughs> take the name Bill just to save um, on having to just to try to uh, get a non Rakasta to write their names down. Yeah. Uh, well, I expect that uh, the tribe folks here would be keen on us staying the night before we set out to the middle of the island again. Uh, yes, they yeah. are looking to do a celebration in your honour. Mm. Excellent. Uh, and they um, do say that uh, uh, no people were sacrificed for your uh, meal. Oh. Nice. Good to know. Very good to know, yep. This has come up <laughs> before. <laughs> before. I'm sure it has. Well, they have uh, talked to uh, uh, most of the party in the past, and there was an objection to uh, people being sacrificed to represent mm -hmm. the meal. I can understand that. Perfectly reasonable. Yep. <laughs> well, Calcrix was one of the people who objected. And who are they to say no to a dragon? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I, I guess she's very smart. I have a dinosaur in their midst. A mm. lot of teeth, a lot of claws, a lot of sli size, a lot of scales. Well, it's the scales get between your teeth. Oh, <laughs> uh, you see, the scales are what you use to pick your teeth clean. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> very useful. Uh, you do see with the tiger clan, they have uh, very large um, tigers, and you realize that their uh, teeth are almost uh, as uh, long as their head is big. Oh, saber tooth tigers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to mess with them. No. And they seem to have some sort of articulated saddle that moves with the um, cat. Uh, yes, cats have a gait that is a real bugger to put a saddle on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you need a special one? It, it, it's one thing that Gatjima uh, will be taking note of is the fact that uh, these type folks do integrate better than the one from the mainland, which Jack Dimmer is still working on ensuring that the others will all integrate together. So, <laughs> well, their their key is uh, each uh, settlement has four clans, and each of the clans uh, provides a service to the clan. Mm. Here, the yeah. uh, Tiger Clan uh, looks after the wall. Uh, the Turtle Clan looks after the sea. The Elk Clan looks after the lands, and the Hawk Clan looks after the sky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when, when you see the elk clan, you do see a couple of uh, minotaurs with elk horns amongst them. Mm. Right. And in the hawk clan. Are they elk tours? Elk tours, yes. They are. Yeah. <laughs> and amongst the hawk clan, quite a few um, bird um, uh, humanoids. Yeah. You, 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 you noticed that uh, uh, Jack Dimmer's. Uh, Mount was apparently a giant elk. Okay. Yes. As you see, uh, a lot of them already <laughs> have um, mounts uh, also disembarking from the yeah. uh, ship. It seems that they were loaded into the um, hull um, at an earlier stage before they picked you up. Yeah, right. 
By the way, um, Jeremy, is that an actual giant elk or is it just a European elk, i.e. two meters at the shoulder? Well, it's actually a drake. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's called elk skin. Because he wears an elk skin. Because <laughs> elk skin. Yes. Yeah. Yes, whereas my, my mount doesn't appear until we get there because I summon it. Mm. And uh, you see the... Uh, 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 Drazzle's uh, medic cart uh, with a door that uh, always seems to be locked, hanging off the back of it. Oh, by the way, never ever open the door. Open the door, or in fact, just don't touch the cart <laughs> unless Drazzle tells you to. Or, or also, don't touch the horse. Right. Because it isn't. No, no, not the horse. Don't touch horse. Yeah, horse, the horse. Hmm. Because it, it's, it's called, not a horse. its name is horse. Its name is horse. It's not a very large black and white cat, is it? <laughs> no, uh, no, no, it, it, it is. Like it uh, looks like no, a I'm oh, the horse and the cat from Foot Rock Flats. Oh, I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, no I, I knew where you were coming from. No. <laughs> it, it's more like I, a uh, overly large Clydesdale. Yeah. Right. Except that like, doesn't walk a like a Clydesdale. It doesn't walk like a horse, it doesn't turn its head like a horse, and it leaves claw marks in the ground. Huh. Right, one of those horses. Yes. Um, but yes, I met a horse called uh, a cat called Dog, yes. who was also called it for a very good reason. Yeah, should have called. I still have my Fort Worth Flats dog that my dad gave me when I was like twelve. Mm. We had we we went to the group house. We had a house, a cat called Mouse. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mouse Trap. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. Mouse Trap. Yeah, that works. 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 Yeah, that Play with me. Mm. I'm bored. <laughs> yes. So it's like, no, it's your home. Play with me. Yeah. Oh, well, so you're eating? Well, play with me some more. <laughs> yeah. so, Sergeant was like that. We had a cat called Sergeant Major, who was yeah. the Sergeant Major of the house. Yeah, that'd be right. Yeah. He wasn't the boss, but when he told you to do something, you did it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, two <laughs> so, yes, you, you are given the, a... the dogs deferred to him. And he deferred to the Russian blue. Yeah. She was the boss. Mm. Yeah. You were given a lavish meal of... Mm. Uh, Non-sacrificed uh, individuals. Uh, <laughs> freshly cooked uh, meat of unusual taste. Right. They, uh, they say definitely not sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> unusual taste, how? You've never tasted it before. Right, okay. Uh, the uh, fruits and... Um, uh, vegetables mm. they have also are unusual. Their taste is completely unique to you. Right. Mm -hmm. I say this has got to do with the Isle of Dread. Mm. Well, the Isle of Dread is one of the primordial places yeah. of the world. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can find things that are long dead elsewhere here. They do have a few places like it around. <sighs> yes. So it's, it's a good chance the meat we've just eaten is dinosaur. Mm. Mm. Or just chicken. Oh, just chicken. It's, 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 it's chicken with significant flavour. Because mm. normal chicken is basically flavourless, which is why everything tastes like chicken. Yes. Uh, but it is really nice. Uh, it is well cooked. Uh, seems to be seasoned uh, depending on how um, hot you want the food. Right. It, can it can be, be hot, hot enough, enough that you will have um, steam pouring out of your mouth. Um, if you want to <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Not unless you eat the wrong bit. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm sure, sure they can arrange for that to happen later if you want. No, thank you. You are offered uh, to choose if you wish to stay with the Hawk Clan, the Elk Clan, the Turtle Clan, or the Tiger Clan for the night. Uh, you don't all have to stay with the same one. They are all uh, rather friendly, though the um, Hawk Clan um, doesn't really blink when it looks at you. Oh, perhaps so, the Tiger Clan. Uh, Lonnie will probably stay with the Tiger Clan as well. Nothing against the Hawk Clan, but it sounds interesting. No, I'll stay with the Hawk Clan. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say, as a party, we don't want to stay together. 
um, well, opportunities to learn information from different yeah. clans, potentially. Um, spread out, so in, in which case, I would suggest then, instead of two people staying with a type of clan, maybe... One each. Um, yeah. I could, I could go, probably... Wait, which one's my missing? Totals. Um, well, totals you're used to. Pick one of the other ones. Um, totals would probably be... Um, I'd probably go better with totals, honestly. Actually, totals would be good for you, because you could talk shop with them. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with turtles. They'd get on well with you. I'm not going to sleep, I bet. Probably it's not. just going to take that long to have that conversation. Well, actually, that would explain one of the reasons why Total Clan talks talk the way they do. They all they all drink kava all the time. Kava's great stuff. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So where does Calprix wish to spend the night? Big to differ on that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, you've had a problem with it? I can have an interesting effect on you. <laughs> Just don't have too much. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. But it does have the thing of there are there are no enemies in Carver. Like you were saying, to stay in the feast hall. It's um, true enough. Yeah, I, I was I was gonna say if if um, if mm. I, I I was. More thinking of trying to stay as a group, but if you we want to get more information, then um, Pat's with Tiger, mm -hmm. uh, Lani's with Tortles, mm -hmm. Drachnum is not with anyone. Drachnum is uh, keeping. Uh, He's not chief sales. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the feast hall. In the communal space. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, that's why I'm like, well, you know, we, we could have all stayed in the communal space together, but um, I, I guess, um, where are you staying, Lowell, again? Are you staying with the Hawk people? With the Hawk, hawk people. people, so I guess it leaves Elk. Mm -hmm. um, why are we trying to get information from them? Just oh, general. Father Pat, but just basically felt the tiger people we were, we were more like his kind. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> finding out about them. Letting them find out about us. Yeah, well, I, I, that's why I was kind of thinking a communal space, because then they can choose to interact well, with us as they need. Yeah. But I don't want to be rude and turn down their offer, right? Well, we, we've just had a large communal meal. Yeah. If, if Father so, Pat actually has any awareness and understanding of the children plans from the time spent in Derrick and... Uh, the Tiger plans would be the scariest. If you think the boogeyman from the south. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably aware that the Trulligan think of the tiger folk as the boogeyman from the south. Yes. Yes. That the tiger uh tiger clan of the Trulligan uh attacked Durrican as a uh almost um daily exercise. But they're a military type of people. They are um, they they are all the Trulligan clan of the military. Yeah. And, um, and that would align more with Father Pets. Well, they don't have anything. Um, in, uh, uh, they don't have non combatants. Yeah, it's there are no non combatants in their culture. It's tribal warrior rather yeah. than military. So if you've changed paths, would you be staying with the combatants? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I want to talk more about this out of the game because I'm thinking there's another oath that's just better with me than, than redemption, the way this game is going, yeah, which is oath of the watchers. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's fitting more with what. Mm. This campaign is yeah. well, there's, yeah. there's nothing strictly. There's nothing wrong with you changing oaths too. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. And, and so um, the the, the, the first few sessions are generally designed to get you more of a feel to the game yeah. and what you feel would work best for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't mind if you change your character. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll first start off with Lowell, who chose the Hawk Clan. Uh, yeah. While you're there, give me a perception roll to see what you notice. Uh, can I start with a passive as I walk in and see what's just... So what is your passive? Quick look around. From memory, it's 23, but I'll double check because I think it's changed. No, it has changed because of yeah, a couple of things, including leveling. It's 27. 27. So oh, very I notice everything. Okay, so walking in, you do see that uh, uh, amongst their designs, most of it is uh, designed with uh, the sky being open to their accommodations. Yep. Uh, yep. Most of their uh, village doesn't have stairs. 
but very few of it uh, can be reached by people without some form of flight. Yep. It does seem there are a few awkward places to climb, so yep. they have catered to non-flyers, and you see a few winged elves amongst them, as well mm. as um, various um, flying races. Yeah. Uh, the majority of them do look like um, uh, hawk as uh, the the core to their sort of people, uh, and they do uh, look to be like fierce mm. warriors in comparison. Yes, I'm mm. not surprised they would be. Um, and uh, unlike many of the um, yeah. uh, bird-like humanoids, their weapons are quite chunky and um, heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, designed to be uh, uh, suited to their frame. So they're pretty beefy. They are very yeah. beefy. Mm. They have a lot of muscle behind them. Their wingspan yeah. is uh, close to um, uh, 15 feet. Hmm. Which still makes them like the height of half uh, 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 and the a weapon. lot of muscle. Uh -oh. What is that, Jeremy? The weapons are all made of air metal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or, or, and the better ones would be enchanted to have no weight when carrying, but lots of mass when you use them. Yes. Hi, this weighs half a pound until I hit you, which point it weighs 12. Whack! Um, yeah, I'm fine with this. In fact, it's one of the reasons I chose the Hawk people, because I knew their accommodation was going to be very non-standard. Mm. They, they are airborne. They're not going to worry about stairs. Fortunately, I can fake it. Mm -hmm. And they also have uh, much um, studying of the constellations here. Yeah. And just looking up through holes in the roof is a big thing. Well, uh, yeah. it's one of the few places in the world that isn't uh, dominated by other forms of interference. Yeah. Yes. And because of the shroud over the northern part of the island, the southern part really gets um, the same sort of clouds. Mm. Yeah, and I'm presuming the wind is usually prevailing northward, so you don't get any of the volcanic stuff either it is but when we, when they get the southern winds it uh has uh the volcanic grain which then uh fertilizes all their ground yeah so they've got no complaints it just interrupts the the the, the sky views which is great that's one of the things I, wa I want to talk to them about but um i have the draconic spell waft mm -hmm. which means i can functionally fly anywhere they can go mm -hmm. And you and you find and that they or if I need to go real distance, they are quite welcoming, and uh, some of them even offer to uh, uh, help you if you need it. As uh, guests of the chief of chiefs, you're given a lot of respect. I give respect due for that view. Um, yes, I. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk down on anybody. I'm going to be properly diplomatic. Um, we, we do, do find their phrases are all about um, uh, the stars and uh, the timing of uh, constellation changes, and that seems to be the focus of their conversations. I, yeah. Um, it can be a bit jarring to start with, but... Well, just to that, um, with... My level of arcana skill. I should have some knowledge there. And for Plus I can adjust. I can adjust to what the For what you see is a primitive um, society. They have quite complex um, uh, uh, star charts. It all starts with observation, and they're doing a lot of observation. They may not necessarily work out anything sophisticated. But just because they're primitive doesn't make them simple. Mm -hmm. And I'm honestly interested in what they, in what they're showing me with the star charts and what they tell me. Okay, uh, they uh, do refer to phenomenon and gravitational lensing in some of their descriptions of stuff. I am fascinated. 
I also yes. add some of my historical knowledge. As they look up at the uh, heavens, and can point out um, things by looking at other things. Because their eyesight is freaking amazing. Yes. Um, they, they do have tools for those who don't quite have the same eyesight. Yes. For adding to this, do you want me to actually do a role or just say, look, I've got history you, with expertise, with a specialization in legends... Um, I've got Arcana with expertise. Um, I can I can keep up with them on what they're talking about, okay. and, possi and possibly add to what they know. Okay, so uh, some of the things that they uh, drop into your conversation is a uh, Draconic Empire of the Stars. I would like to know more of this. Uh, as they are... Uh, uh, as the little dragon, illusionary dragon on my shoulder goes... <laughs> <laughs> as that's where uh, a lot of the dragons will um, depart to. I need to know a lot more about this. So they, they, they basically give you a very... Uh, uh, space 101. I am incredibly interested in take notes just I that to know more of this uh, uh, there there are not many who can uh, survive such a journey I have a good idea what's actually required um, having been a ship that can come close to doing that sort of thing okay so then we move over to so, uh, father Pat mm -hmm. and the, he doesn't have such anything uh, like his. Uh, the are <laughs> no. are all extremely polite and nice uh, they set you up in a really nice, comfortable room with a uh, bed that looks like it's made out of metal, but uh, feels softer than a um, feather. And uh, any meal you um, say you feel like having, they seem to be able to walk into the room with it moments later. Right. <laughs> no matter what you come up with. I am feeling very replete from life from the from the dinner earlier. I do not need any more food. <laughs> they 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 have a replicate. They have what? A replicate. Or, replicate. Yeah. or someone who can do a fast so fabricate. What some of the other characters know is the Rakasta are also spacefaring. So they're the ones who uh, mm. protect the outer planet from yeah. invaders. Mm. Yeah. Not that they announce that to the lesser people on the planet. And this <laughs> is where this is aligning more and more with the Oath of the Watchers. Yeah. <laughs> it was all about. Nice. Extra planar type mm -hmm. practice, yeah, defense and, and things like that. So. They go out of their way to hide their tech, even if people somehow stumble mm -hmm. across it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this could be the last steps of you actually changing your right. Yeah, you so you do yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you, you have a very relaxing night. It's probably the best sleep you've ever had. And you wake up in the morning and find that uh, someone's stolen your stump. Uh, okay. <laughs> and there's something else stuck on there. Right. <laughs> it <Tell me> all. <laughs> seems to be made mostly of metal. Right. And it feels lighter? Well, it doesn't feel any really different. Point, <laughs> there's no weight to it at all. <laughs> you can't feel any. It doesn't feel different. Right. I'm going yeah, to come in closer. I'm fairly used to the old wooden stump, so I'm, you know, obviously I can notice this one's metal. You know. <laughs> but you can take it off and have a look inside. I would do this, yes. Well, uh, you touch it and you can uh, feel touching it. Oh, oh, you've got a sense of touch. A sense of touch back. Mm -hmm. Can I wiggle it? Uh, you can. I can control it more than a stump? It seems to be uh, some form of mechanical leg. I'm a cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're now a an actively active cyborg. An active well, cyborg. It, it, it doesn't look it's technological, but it does um, feel, uh, very feel very... Um, um, you can feel it. Yeah. You, you, you're and, proud and of dwarves making such things. Right. Yeah. And of course, it all acts as a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> has it got from a magazine around the top or anything like that? Uh, I was going to see kick you in the ankle and have a work. Work. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As long as they've got a mind of a dog to kick you back. <laughs> well, the dwarves were always saying they were going to get around to making you one. Yeah. <laughs> so now, I've made... now, now you've got one that doesn't sting. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it feels more like living metal. Right, okay. So it feels oh, nice. warm to touch. Mm -hmm. 
I'm properly grateful for this. this. Well, no, they're, not. they're going to go get two shoes. <laughs> Yes. No, don't do a um, shoe for it. That's not oh, a shoe. You, you do realise that it, it does seem to have more of a cat's foot to it than a humanoid foot. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's got claws. Yes. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Cool. Are they retractable? Oh, no, yeah. They are. Yes. They're cat ones. <laughs> they, they are literally <laughs> cat feet. Cat. <laughs> Okay. Not only on one leg because the other one, well, that wasn't blown off. <laughs> this is getting confused. Any oh, any rage that comes after me. Hang on. Oh, one oh. cat foot. When human foot. <laughs> it's not like if he's the ranger and he's trying to track me. <laughs> We're following a, an Irish ranger and his cat companion, both of them are hobby. Exactly. <laughs> Don't worry, we just call him Lefty. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you're lucky they didn't go, well, you know, you have to have matching legs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, that wouldn't be a problem from which, the game point of view. Which, which could have, you know, that, that's a possibility. <laughs> Cat, cat it's a good thing you take your role. This is an Oscar Pretorius I'm thinking of. From the, exactly. The oh, exactly. You'd run faster. <laughs> okay, so yes, you, 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 you do have a surprise waking going. up. Yes. Uh, then out down in the Total cr uh, Clan with Lani, uh, yep. you find that they do have uh, most of their um, bedding is uh, water-based. Uh, and they do have... Uh, uh, the gentle lapping of um, uh, tides throughout their village. It sounds like home. Water <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, I guess reminds her of being back on the yeah. Andy Isles and leather bags of water with water beds. I guess mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. So very neat. Yeah. I'm just appreciating having some general senses of home and You're speaking <laughs> with, with them yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not using those right you now. need to take all of those weapons off you <laughs> yeah. yeah take the weapons off before down. laying down i'm going to spare one of them and they do have uh uh very much a uh, oh, culture one's about uh time <laughs> yeah. not being linear that's an actual skull <laughs> oh dear she shares her newly gained insight on this and listens carefully to their wisdom because Lonnie now knows that she needs to seek and heed all wisdom that comes her way. And uh, you, you get an Thank idea oh. that you uh, have met with these people many times so you don't remember it yet. Oh, or will have met. Of course. She's, I feel like she's getting used to this feeling. Hmm. <laughs> as we go on. <laughs> as uh, turtles are one, really? turtles are one yeah. of the few species that uh, 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 seem to be able to traverse um, timelines. That being makes sense. A water being time, yes. Mm. Mm. Is, mm. And so you get some sort of uh, bet better feel about the flow of time. As it's not one way. That's mm. very possibility very is a um, direction of time. So you might find yourself on a long time. Not necessarily the same way. Just like a prophecy, it comes true faster. <laughs> and some of their conversations start with the end, uh, uh, go past the beginning, and then somehow have the content later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, with, with that, that she will just take in everything they may say and uh, add that to her understanding of time. And you do see that uh, uh, one of the elders is sitting with Drazzle going through uh, one of his books with him, mm -hmm. making notes. And uh, down in the Alp Clan with Calcrix. Mm -hmm. Calcrix is uh, definitely welcomed in. Yep. They provide uh, much uh, dancing, and uh, a uh, hut is specifically set up for you to be able to stretch out and luxuriate on a big pile of bedding. Okay, yeah. With jack beans? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's more for the dancing rather than sleeping, but, you 
<laughs> and so there is a, a, a lot of uh, congratulations uh, for uh, returning, considering uh, it's not the first time you're here, it's not the second time here, it's the third time you've come here. Very few well, people make it past like the first. been here several yeah. times, so... Not a big deal. Mm. Well, for these no, I, w- I will be here several times. Yes. Different. Yes, she, she will have been here. Yeah. And I would yeah. have been here in the future. previously. <laughs> and in the past. In the past. Because it's possible for her to go back in time and meet someone again before they she met them the first time. Yes. It was my followers that well, set up the temple in the middle of the island. You keep saying that about travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just more trying to remember how many times I've been here. Um, but if, if they feel it's worthy of celebration, then I'm not going to object. And a lot of the kids are, are, are hoping that you'll allow them to draw little pictures on your scales. Um, they can draw, join Eep, who's probably doing that already. And so you wake up the next day completely multicolored with all these uh, uh, pictures um, done by the uh, Elk Clan, all of yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, remember, remember we discussed the tattoos, the hood tattoo when you Yeah, yeah, but mine won't probably have anywhere near as much meaning or depth. But, oh, they would, they would draw my kids for but, you. But uh, <laughs> uh, I will definitely look like a six year, year six coronal. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, it, uh, it, it, it is uh, extremely well um, done. Uh, it does tell a tale of your first and second visit to the island. Mm hmm. And you can see uh, references to Car, references to the Great One, references to Io, mm-hmm. and references to the Primal Titans. Okay, so it's not like a six. Unfortunately, three. you can't see the ending of the story. You can just tap in that spot on your back and you can't fucking <laughs> <laughs> No, look, right now she's, she's looking at one that's on, on one of the larger scales on her tail that shows a dragon figure holding out what looks like a ball of two different colours with a circle in the middle and uh, a human uh, fighter being zapped into said ball while also being eaten by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, Tuesday. Friday. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, they were Pokeballs. Uh, in any general Friday. Yeah. And, and yes, the, the human fighter did get bitten and almost eaten by the T-Rex just as they both got zapped into the Pokeball. Mm-hmm. Right. The, uh, the uh, person in question got woken up to a T-Rex looking down at them and chose to run. Not very far, one thing. Well, once you go a certain distance from a uh, creature of any sort, unless you do a withdrawal, it has an attack of opportunity, yeah, which it took, cool. and then picked uh, said person up in its jaw and then it got um, put into a suspended animation with both people. In the Pokeball. Yeah. Yeah, so she was being eaten so for an a great long time. time. <laughs> uh, still not being forgiven for that yet. <laughs> it, I, I thought I would just get the T-Rex, not the, not the person. It was, was much funnier when you caught yourself. That, you know, that's what happens when you're off. Fruit balance, bing! <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yes. And I still run off into forests when there's pretty lights off in the distance, so be warned. <laughs> and did that uh, a couple of sessions ago. You also have a bag of um, coffee beans, uh, locally grown. Uh, that, that she's, she's very appreciative of all of these things. Um, she would... Uh, give them also um, some of her coffee bean samples from the various places she's collected them. She particularly think they might be interested in some of the ones from the furthest places that they probably haven't been, like Yalaram. They do like the coffee from Yalaram. Yes. Mm. It is stronger than their coffee. It is very strong. But doesn't have the same medicinal pro- uh, uh, effects as their coffee. No. Um, that her, of course, her personal coffee bean has proper magical aspects to it, so... Which is similar to theirs. Yes, yeah. Um, um, Just that grown in different regions, different effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, she, she, she will, will hopefully, they'll, they'll find it useful. So you find yourself all meeting up, um, the well looking like he never slept. I didn't. Uh, 
Uh, no, you have it. probably signed for Lonnie. What did Dracula You have. I have a little of exhaustion and I'm fine with that. Father Pat uh, <laughs> has a gleaming foot. Yeah. Uh, Dracnum uh, looks like um, he, he uh, slept well because uh, they, they left him to his own devices in the. Him um, being the big boss and all. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably what he wanted. Yes, yes. Well, I, mean, I, I would have expected there would have been the opportunity, like, uh, probably talking long into the night is, uh, uh, with the, the leaders type stuff that's going on with patients. But, uh, so he, he then needs like five hours to catch up all the shit he anyway, so then he yes. us. Uh, they're most likely caught up with you during the celebrations. Right with that? Because most of them look after their own flocks overnight. Yeah. And uh, Lani comes in looking extremely um, pleased with herself. Very happy. Mm -hmm. That's good. I feel like I maybe understand time a little bit better. Uh, you see uh, Calcrex bounce along the path, uh, looking like a uh, child of Wonderworld. <laughs> Six grade four. Uh, you, you look at the pictures on it, and it doesn't look like a sixth grader did them. <laughs> it looks like master artisans did them. Nice. I give Calcrex a very nice, genuine compliment that I am enjoying her colorful artwork, because Lonnie as well also has some uh, Polynesian tribal tattoos, just not super, super pronounced. Mm. Um... So, just appreciating Calcrix's new artwork. And uh, uh, when Drizzle joins you, uh, you see Drizzle with one of the Tiger Clan uh, uh, talking in a strange language mm -hmm. that also doesn't translate. Right. I'm yeah, there'll be a few things that don't translate. Uh, you do note Sid also speaks that language. Hmm. I do remember that the castor language didn't translate. Mm -hmm. mm, mm. Well, because it's mostly scientific jargon that I have no reference for, mm. so I can't <laughs> use comprehend languages on it. Mm. Yes, you can't comprehend something that has no meaning in your um, culture. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yes. Exactly. And so we'll be finishing tonight's session mm. with um, them leading you to the great <coughs> gates that are 50 feet high. Mm. Uh, uh, that are... Uh, uh, have a hundred feet of um, length split down the middle. Does anyone know the And it's a double set of gates, so enough so that you can all be uh, inside and then shut it before opening the outer doors for good right. reason. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just yeah, we'll it. Yeah. Right. I, have, I had a look at some pictures for um, that part of the island, mm -hmm. and it's basically if you've ever seen um, King Kong, mm -hmm. that is the wall of the village. Mm -hmm. That's what they're based it on. It's yeah. that big. It's supposed to be big enough to stop something the size of King Kong. Mm. Well, that's a bit of a, on the flight back from Norfolk mm. last week, we had Kong versus God, Godzilla. Mm. Oh, Have you ever seen that? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well. Apparently and, and we also saw the Fallen Empire follow up. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's also pretty good. Yeah. I liked it better than the Kong versus um, Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't a great storyline, the Kong versus Godzilla. <laughs> Oh, it was to set up the next movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant monster movies. <laughs> really like, when people go to me and they're like, I watched Godzilla this or that, and I did not like the plot or the story. I'm like, it's a big monster movie. There is no plot, there is no story. It's not supposed to be a plot or a storyline. It's big monsters <laughs> fighting each other. Yeah, it's like it... people who complain about the Meg's storyline. Yeah. I'm like, you are not watching this for the story. You're watching it for, <laughs> for the, the big giant shark. shark. And so we, we, we have the uh, scene finishing with the lot of you walking out slow-mo uh, into the um, forest and unknown. Um, Perfect. That's riding out. Thank you very much. <laughs> I would like to put instant recording. Yeah, it's going, this feels great. <laughs> and what was that, Kesley? I'm drifting. I was going to say, I, I'd like to put out into the recording that for my own reference, if I want to remember what uh, the God of Death had said to me about returning to the Isle of the Year, it is session 114. <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm putting on the recording so that I can remember later. Good reference. <laughs> yep. Okay, so um, I, I, I'll put it on end recording and chat to you afterwards. Yep. Yes. Thank you very much.